Craig Lee, Hawkeyes are number one. The Iowa Hawkeye football team is ranked number one in one of the latest college polls. I've got it right here. The AP poll is out. Yes, indeed, it's true. The Hawkeyes, the number one team in the land. Number one for the first time in 25 years. The Hawks have soared to the top on the strong arm of Heisman candidate Chuck Long, who has returned for a fifth year and is Iowa's all-time leading passer. On the ground, the workhorse is All-America Ronnie Harmon. Back from a broken leg, Harmon is a slashing runner with a keen eye for the end zone. But it's not just the offense that has head coach Hayden Fry stoked up. For the Hawkeyes possess a dominating defense that is both opportunistic and hard-hitting. Yes, good news for the folks in Iowa. The bad news is over for a while because right now the Hawkeyes are number one. meets Michigan State, and head coach George Perlis Spartans have played Iowa tough. A year ago, it came down to this play for a two-point conversion. Iowa will go for broke. Boy, I like this. This is guts on the part of Hayden Fry. No doubt about it. Here's Chuck Long. Going to keep him. Going to go into the end zone for two points. No, he didn't make it. He did not make it. Michigan State won 17-16, to knocking Iowa out of the Rose Bowl. Today, they'll meet again, and revenge will be on the minds of the Hawkeyes. It's homecoming live from Iowa City. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa, it's the Michigan State Spartans versus the Iowa Hawkeyes. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet. It's 1986 at your Chevy dealers now. Live today's Chevrolet. GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. And by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. It was a county fair atmosphere here in Iowa City earlier this morning. The fans started arriving at 8 o'clock because it's never too early to celebrate when your favorite football team is ranked number one. And here comes the visitors, Michigan State. Their head coach, George Perlis. And now the number one ranked football team in the land with coach Hayden Fry leading along with quarterback Chuck Long. It is the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger, along with Eric Parsegan. The Hawkeyes, number one. Era, you're no stranger to that. Fifteen times you brought Northwestern and Notre Dame into games. You were ranked number one. What problems does that pose for Hayden Fry? Well, I think it's a tremendous honor for Hayden Fry, the team, the coaches, and everybody connected with Iowa. But also, it carries quite a burden for them because every team that they play the rest of the year is going to make Iowa a target. They're going to try to make their reputation by beating Iowa. But I think Hayden Fry has it in a proper perspective. He knows the most important poll is going to come at the end of the year. Great players on this Iowa team. You've seen Chuck Long and Ronnie Harmon, linebacker, Larry Station. How about the Michigan State personnel? Well, Michigan State's going to have to come into this ball game without their starting quarterback, Dave Urema, for the third straight week. Bobby McAllister will start. He started the last two games. Hasn't been too productive. He's only had two touchdowns in those two ball games. But the coaching staff is really high on him. They think he's an outstanding prospect, practices well, and they hope this afternoon that he'll blossom and give the Hawkeyes a real battle. Era looks like a mismatch on paper. It really does when you look at it. Uh, but one of the interesting comments that George Perlis made was that he's got to avoid losing this game. Sounds kind of negative, but really what the situation is this. He cannot afford any high-risk plays in his own territory. No fumbles, no interceptions. No penalties of major consequence. A strong kicking game. He'd like very much to possession the football himself, if he can, to keep the ball away from a very strong Iowa offense. He did it a year ago. Can he do it this year? Let's take a look at it. All right. We're about to find out the opening kickoff coming up. 
the number one ranked Hawkeyes of Iowa will take on the Spartans of Michigan State. As usual, a sellout crowd here in Kinnick Stadium. Weather is going to be a factor because of the wind. Measured at 20 miles an hour, it has been gusting up to 25 here this afternoon. Era Michigan State won the flip and elected to defer, and you don't agree with that choice. I think I would have played to my strong suit, which is Michigan State's defense. I think I would rather give the ball to the Hawkeyes, let them work into the wind in the first quarter, and play for those breaks. They're going to their short suit, their offense is not exactly productive as we talked earlier. Well, Rob Houtland is teeing up the ball for the Hawkeyes. They will have that gusting wind at their back. And we are underway. Johnson, six yards deep, is coming out behind a wedge. Back down near the 16 yard line. Now let's take a look at the Michigan State attack. Bobby McAllister, six foot three inch freshman, is the quarterback and his fullback, whose father once was the captain at Notre Dame. And one of the best tailbacks in the country is Lorenzo White. Mark Ingram, they're going to try to throw to him today. Andre Risen is the other wide out. And Butch Roll out of Florida is the tight end. Here is first down for Michigan State. McAllister rolls to the right and completes a pass on first down to the tight end roll. Beautiful bootleg play, a good choice by George Perlis of the Spartans, and a good psychological move for McAllister because he has not had two great games in the games that he started against Notre Dame as well as Western Michigan last week. Era, are you surprised that they roll out right away, get a 19-yard gain, and put it up against the wind on first down? Looks like it was pretty well planned and scouted, doesn't it? White is set behind, takes the handoff, and the Hawkeyes were ready that time. Let's take a look at the Michigan State offensive line. He's 6'6", 269. Next to him, Rodgers will go 6'3", 247. The center is 6'2", 238. Wojciechowski, perhaps their best lineman, 6'4", 246, and 6'4", 255. A big, experienced offensive line. Lorenzo White has carried this team, and he'll try again here. Short of the first down, met by George Davis, number 37, who drilled him and drove him out of bounds. An end zone shot here. You'll see Lorenzo White, tremendous runner. I think he's an outstanding halfback. Cuts to the outside here. Does a good job of getting some yardage there. He's been a 100-yard getter now five straight weeks in a row. Third and four. McAllister rolls the other way. He's two for two and another first down. He hit Reno Bell on a double tight end formation, and Devon Mitchell made the stop for the Hawkeyes. Is that bootleg pass again that they ran on the first play? You'll see he comes the other way with it. They're in double wing, two tight ends. He fakes the pitch to Lorenzo. The linebackers go with him, and he hits Belk right across the middle. Two beautiful passes by McAllister, and maybe he will blossom in this game as they had hoped. A lot of formation distortion here to stretch the defense, as you see. Inside Iowa's 45-yard line. Oh. White is smacked down at the line of scrimmage. Davis again, number 37. Boy, George Davis, number 37, really does it. Watch here. George Davis, the linebacker on the weak side, comes flying in right there, and he hits Lorenzo before he gets any kind of head of steam. Second and 10, and we'll see if McAllister elects to roll out again here. Craig Johnson has checked in. He's on a wing for Michigan State. He's coming around, and Iowa is ready. John Breeze, number 57, penetrated and brought him down for the loss. Now you wonder why Iowa is number one in the nation against the rush. They've only given 17.7 yards per game. There's a pretty good example of why. This era will be third and 14. Be a tough call. Now 
Forrester under center checks the defense station steps up in McAllister roll right complete and it's close to a first down as he hit Ingram and there is a penalty flag down penalty on the play I am very impressed with how accurately McAllister is throwing the ball well you know we were saying at the top of the show that let's hear what he has to say here well start five yards well that's a tough penalty for him we we're saying that McAllister has looked good in practice does all the things that they want but he was inexperienced as George Perlis said he hasn't had the kind of a seasoning that he would like and certainly this drive has been an impressive one they'll have be hard pressed to make up the yardage here era they have been plagued by penalties in their first three games this year and a team that does not have an explosive offense must cut down the penalty mistakes very good point this is what George Perlis wanted to do but here's one that's very costly took away a first down it is third and 19 for the Spartans Ingram has it complete, but it is far short of the first down. Ken Sims, number nine, was the defensive back on the coverage for Hayden Fry. It's an 11 yard gain, and George Montgomery will have to punt now. Can't say enough about McAllister here. He's off to a roaring start. It bodes well for Michigan State in this football game because they can be a threat now. They've had no passing attack to speak of. They were last in the conference by at least 100 yards. And uh, that is really a tremendous start for McAllister, I think. Here is Greg Montgomery, and he possesses an extremely strong leg. One of the better punters in the nation. <laughs> Billy Happel lets the ball bounce. It takes an Iowa bounce and is down there at the 21 yard line. So Chuck Long will come to work and his backfield is extremely explosive. Long has suddenly propelled himself into the Heisman Trophy race. His fullback is primarily a blocker. His tailback is the game breaker. And he has two control wide receivers who will fool you. They do not have blazing speed, but they catch everything that Long puts up. And Mike Flagg has replaced Jonathan Hayes, who went to the Kansas City Chiefs. We got a nice balance there. Here is Harmon. Looking for daylight at Shane Bulla. And the rest of that Hawkeye offense that will try to open the holes. Crossed in a 6'5, 275. He's 6'3, 255. The center is the main man, 6'2, 255. He calls the blocking assignments. 6'3, 265, a converted tight end. And Haight, 6'4, 275, who will have his hands full today, taking on Kelly Quinn. The left defensive end 93 should be one of the best interior matchups of the day. Harmon and there are penalty flags all over. Seem to be some movement. Look like the tight end Mike Flag number 86 moved just before the snap. Let's see what he says. Yeah. There you see the stand up tight end which Iowa does you see him make the move there and he wasn't set a full second. That was the call. Hayden Fry of course used the first stand up tight end when he was coaching at North Texas State. Daryl Terrell was the wide receivers name who was pressed in. And because he was so familiar with standing up as a wide receiver. They used it that day as a tight end in a game and it was very good in reading defenses. So ever since then coach Fry has used a stand up tight end. Now it is third and six. The veteran law sets his play short drop quick pass to Smith on the sideline. Looks like he got the first down there too, just about right. Here's an end zone shot. Take another look at it. Just a quick out by Long. He just drops straight back, reads the coverage, and delivers. And it looks like he both. Oh, good job there by Smith. Excellent job. Now here is the contest inside. 93 is Kelly Quinn, one of the better rushmen in the country. 
And Haydu had his hands full with him here last year, doing a good job. Notice how far apart he keeps his legs and his balance to keep that rush man from getting outside and around it. Here's first and ten. Calling his plays at the line. Short drop complete again. That one is to Halverson. And Keith Fisher was the cornerback. Definitely an audible by Long. We watched him on Thursday. He found the defensive cornerback back off. That was Sims, uh, or Crum, Crum rather, back off number 35, and he just picked it right there, just a quick out. Second and two, and the play is sent in from the Iowa sideline. Wide receivers generally are the messengers. This time they take Ronnie Harmon out, go to one running back, and it's the fullback. He stays in to protect. Long goes deep for the home run. It's Smith. He's got it at the 15. Touchdown, Iowa. The Hawkeyes show you why they are ranked number one. A beautiful job of sequencing on the part of the Hawkeyes. That time Smith faked the out and went right up the sideline. He beat Keith Fisher. Rob Hutman adds the extra point. From the end zone, you'll see Long drop back into the pocket here. Smith goes out, fakes the out pattern. Fisher bites it, and Smith turns up the field. You can see he has about a three-step lead on him. Long drops the ball in beautiful, and you're not going to catch Smith. He's a real flyer. The sequence, they threw underneath Fisher twice. Then they spent the speed man out after it. And Robert Smith, fake short, broke long. And it was touchdown, Hawkeyes. And here, the top-ranked team in the country has opened up a quick lead on Michigan State. Rob Houtman set to tee it up. And Era, right off the bat, you were so correct about the win. Chuck Long had it at his back, and he went for the home run and connected against the Spartans, who had the choice. They could have taken the win here early. Well, he really took advantage of it, and he's got a lot of quarter left here. Ten minutes with a win in his back. Johnson, the 10, the 15, out to the 24-yard line before the Hawkeyes bring him down. Next week, a reminder that we will have these Spartans of Michigan State again at home when they take on the Michigan Wolverines. That's one of the tougher grudge matches in the country. George Perlis, of course, who is recruiting against Bo Schimbeckler in the state of Michigan, knows how important it is to beat the Wolverines when he goes head to head against them. And it took long five plays to cover that distance. Now it is McAllister who threw very well, but was hurt badly by a penalty on his first drive. Lorenzo White squeezes out a couple of yards before Hap Peterson. Along with Jeff, Jeff Ross. Ross. Yeah, Jeff was in there too. He's a big guy. 6'5", 286. Let's meet that Iowa defense. Doug Burrell there at one end. And there's Jeff. He was forced to play the nose last year because Peterson was injured. Then Breeze, who has already penetrated once here this afternoon, and Joe Matu drops off in pass coverage on many of the defenses used by the Hawkeyes. McAllister on the roll, eludes Peterson. Throws complete to Risen. First down. And the young man who came in with bad passing statistics has been impressive throwing. He really has. I've been impressed. You'll see Peterson, number 50, almost gets to McAllister right there. But he keeps his poise, turns and throws back inside there to early. And he makes a nice catch and gets a first down on it. Nice job here thus far. So Andre Risen caught that pass thrown by McAllister and has a first down out at the 39 yard line. George Perlis with a slot left. 
And here comes White. And he gets out to the 45-yard line. Drost again dropping back. Larry Station, their honor student, is at one linebacker spot. George Davis, who was impressive here on that first sequence. Ken Sims back in the secondary along with Nate Creer out of Tilden High in Brooklyn. Jay Norvolo had a big week against Iowa State. And another young man out of Tilden High School in Brooklyn, Devon Mitchell. Second and four. Motion. White breaks a tackle, spinning free. Gets the first down, cuts back. What a beautiful run. Is he something? I'll tell you, Lorenzo White is a great running back. 14 yards on that play, and he did it all on his own. Should have been stopped at the line of scrimmage. I'm really impressed. Watch him make people miss. Get right there, number 57 is right on top of him to make the play. That's John Breeze. He's just a tremendous runner. First and 10 for the Spartans. They're down to the Hawkeye 41 yard line. They trail early, 7 0. Morris in motion. White. And again, it is the talented running back out of the state of Florida who makes that play work for a few yards. That's from last night and the Cardinals closing to within one of the Eastern Division Championship. And again, Kansas City now with a three-game lead in the loss column on the Angels. And the Yankees with an amazing comeback staying alive, but they trailed Toronto this afternoon. Second and six. McAllister on the roll, complete again. That bootleg pass, Iowa's having a difficulty in covering. They've had receivers open all the time. There's Roll that cut it again. Didn't get quite as much yardage, yardage as they had in the previous bootlegs. And again, Norvell, number 45. <laughs> McAllister is five for five in this ball game with 58 yards. He's almost up, almost up to his game average per game average the last two games. Third and three for the Spartans. Here's White. First down. And Norvell came up and just went headhunting on that play. Oh, number 45 looks impressive in that secondary. Aiden Fry was talking about Norvell. He's been a pleasant surprise. Number 45 right in the middle of the screen. Watch him come up. Lorenzo's turning to the inside. Does a good job. There was a good block out in front. Watch Norvell really hit White. Oh, that's Big Ten football. And the reason why it was open is John Wojciechowski, number 73. He got out there and blew that hole open for White. First and 10. Motion again, and it's White. Penalty marker is down. White got to the 25-yard line, but there is a flag. Goes against the Spartans again. Illegal motion. They're going to take him back five yards. How about Pittsburgh? Joe Morrison's club, not as good as we expected. Rutgers tried to beat Boston College this afternoon. And Army rolling. So that's two penalties against Michigan State already in the first quarter here this afternoon coach. Yeah the, they've been costly in both instances where they've made positive yardage. George Perlis there I'm sure he's concerned about it but he's got to be pleased with the way the offense is moving the ball particularly McAllister's throwing. He's out here doing a good job. A red shirt freshman quarterback forced to play because of Dave Urema's thumb injury. Urema is expected back for the Spartans next week against Michigan. Here's White. And the Hawks were ready. Looked Richard like Pryor was over there. Pryor and Dross both were over there. Good reaction on the part of the left side of the line. It'll be second and 15. 
See those stats, five for five for 58 for McAllister. He's averaging 64 yards a game. Wisen comes to the slot left. McAllister off the roll, being pursued. He'll put it away and step out of bounds. Devon Mitchell was the defensive back. He sealed off when he realized that McAllister had committed himself to the run. Excellent pursuit by the Hawkeyes that time. McAllister was trying to get leverage at the corner, couldn't find an open receiver. But from up here, the vantage point, tremendous pursuit. Great defense by Iowa. The play coming in from the sideline as Perlis sends in two running backs. He takes White out. Morris and Johnson. Johnson goes to a wing. Morris, the lone setback. Morris is going to throw the halfback pass. It's left handed. Johnson is out of bounds. He had him open. He just threw the ball out of bounds. I don't think they can go for a field goal here. It looks to me like he's just out. Here's another look at it. Pitches the ball out to Lorenzo, and Johnson goes up the sideline. He's always oh, hit just as he throws the ball. George Davis came in there, and I think that might have thrown that pass off. I think he's got a pooch kick it here. I don't think his kicker can get it between the end of the uh, field goal. He's going to try it here, but he said yesterday that his range, he had to be at the 30-yard line. He's got a little wind going, too. Chris Caudell will attempt what will be a 51-yard field goal. Into the wind, it comes up short. And the Hawkeyes get the wind at their back with 531 left here in the opening quarter in Iowa City. The top ranked team in the country leads seven to nothing and we're about to see their second possession. The Michigan State defense will try to come up with something. Today it's college football on CBS and tomorrow it's regional NFL action. San Francisco against Atlanta, Minnesota and the Rams. Red Hot Chicago Bears take on Tampa Bay and they keep it going. Detroit will play the Packers and Philadelphia against New Orleans. Here, Chuck Long, who certainly will be playing in the NFL next year, has a 7 to nothing lead on Michigan State. And again, he calls the play at the line of scrimmage. He'll throw on first down to the sideline and Helverson. Todd Crum was the defensive back, 35. How about Illinois and Ohio State? Let's go to Pat Hayden and get an update in New York. Pat? Brent, turnovers have been killing Illinois all year long. This is their 18th. Fullback Keith Jones forces the ball. Terry White is there to make the interception era. That is a funny call on second and goal. It was an unusual call, Pat. This is second and two. Long brings the Hawkeyes up. Michigan State has made a substitution in the secondary. And here's Ronnie Harmon running toward the new cornerback. Rowe could not bring him down. Let's take a look at this Michigan State defense. The ringleader, of course, is Kelly Quinn. Next to him is Mark Nichols at 6'2", 228. Then it is Joe Curran, 5'11", 260. And John Jones is number 88, 6'1", 221. They'll work a lot of tricks and stunt throughout the afternoon. see the advantage that Iowa has here. Michigan State defense is quite quick and they get a lot of twists and stunts in there. They're trying to get a linebacker in on Long who throws incomplete. Bill Happel was the intended target. The crowd is booing because Happel went down and they wanted interference. Now the new cornerback Ronald Rowe is number 18 for Michigan State. Well, it was an inadvertent trip. It was not a deliberate thing. Both of them ran into one another, and so it's not a penalty. He's out of San Diego, California. He's a junior, and he's replaced Keith Fisher. And right away, the Hawkeyes come out to challenge him, too. This is second and ten. And 
And Rowe presses on this side against Helverson. Another audible by Long. Takes a deep drop this time. Plenty of time. He drops it off to Flagg, the tight end. Flagg is across midfield to the 49-yard line, short of a first down. And again, it was Ronald Rowe who has been very active since coming off George Perlis's bench to start this serve. Well, the, George said yesterday he has problems at the corner. They're young and experienced. And uh, certainly he was right when Keith Fisher was beaten for that long touchdown. But Rowe has come in and done a nice job. Era, they're not getting the kind of penetration that Perlis expects out of the front four. Yeah, you're exactly right, Brent. They picked up the blocking very well. One of the things that concerned Hayden Fry was the rush and all the different blitzes that Michigan State puts on, but they've done a good job on it. Got a timeout here at Iowa City. And George Perlis has substituted three out of the four rushmen. We'll be right back. It's third and four. Steve Furness is the assistant coach there, the mustache and the headset, formerly a defensive lineman under Perlis with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now he calls the tricks and he has been talking to his tackles because it is obvious that the Iowa blocking scheme has been successful here early in this game. They've been giving Long all the protection he needs. Now it is third and four. The ball is at the state 49 yard line. This is Ronnie Harmon. Didn't get it. They were ready for that play. They really were. They, they tried to audibleize on the play, but they did not, uh, they were not successful with it. Well, let's see if the Buckeyes got in the end zone. Let's go to New York, and here's Pat. They certainly did, Brent. What is the offense line? This is the big question mark for Ohio State coming into the year this year. Big hole on the left side for highly regarded freshman Vince Workman, a gaping hole there. He shows a lot more shiftiness. Now let's go back to Brent Nera. All right, Pat, Iowa. Hunting, and that is Helton. Ball is fumbled. Michigan State trying to get it down at the 12. And that specialty team of Hayden Fries, they just came down there smelling blood, Coach, when they saw that loose ball. <laughs> it was excellent coverage. There was a fumble, but he recovered it back. It'll be Michigan State's ball. Well, Morris alertly jumped on the ball. We'll be back. Iowa leads Michigan State by seven. couldn't see who was in the deep position at the We are back, and Coach Hayden Fry told his players to approach this game like we're number two and trying to become number one. Then I asked Hayden, well, have you given the fans here any special signal for the occasion? You bet. We've, uh, we've already given the word. We want them to realize that we're also playing like number two. We want them to hold up two fingers rather than number one. Not only does it uh, denote humility, but also it's a little different. What does that look like, Hayden? Well, it looks like Winston Churchill in the old days. V stands for victory, number two. Or we could give them a hook em hawks. <laughs> Good old Texas boy. <laughs> Most people rent a truck over the phone. A truck they haven't. He told his defensive captains, we need a turnover down here. Let's see if they can get it. The wing back around, and it was Morris, the fullback, lined up. Gets to the 13-yard line before he's smacked down. I think George Perlis probably wants to be very conserv conservative down here. Doesn't want to make a, a mistake. He knows if he gets behind 14 to nothing, he said it himself yesterday, that they're not a catch-up team. So he doesn't want any mistakes. He'd like to grind out a first down, run that clock off, and get some of the, get the wind himself if he can. But field position is going to be tough for him if he has to punt into the wind here. He has to be drooling to get the wind at his back the way McAllister has been winging it here so far this afternoon. And also a little field position if he can get it. A lot of motion, Era. And that time they ran white, and the Hawkeyes just penetrated. They blasted across with John Breeze, number 57, and Mott 97 there to help clean up. I think you'll see some conservative plays here. It'll be interesting to see whether he wants to risk a pass down here. I don't think he will because of the circumstances. He'd rather have his kicker, Montgomery, kick the ball into the wind than take a turnover down here. Okay, third down, five, Perlis, who works with both the offense and the defense during the course of a game. Slot formation to the right. Tight end in motion. McAllister on the roll will put it up. 
It's complete to the tight end who came out in motion. That's Butch Roll, number 89. Good job. They flooded the side. It was a very safe pass. I think that McAllister would have thrown the ball away had he not had him wide open. Roll was open. McAllister, McAllister is having a good day. Ten more yards passing for him, and already he is six of six against the win for 68 yards. And again, I go back to the fact that Michigan State has been hit with two costly penalties here in the first 12 minutes of this quarter. They trail it by seven, and here's the tailback, White, trying to get daylight. And again, Norvell, number 45, came up and knocked his legs out from under him. If Norvell had not made that play, White would have been running down that sideline. Norvell's a good football player. Senior from Madison, Wisconsin. He's six foot four, 207. He's really a hard hitter. Davis is replaced by Worth at linebacker by the Hawkeyes. White's got 44 yards so far in this first quarter. He comes again. Did he get the first down, Arrow? I don't think so. I think he's short by a yard or so. Yep. Left third down here against a pretty stout defense. Looks like the Hawkeye defense is well prepared for White, but McAllister on those rollouts has them a little off balance. Kind of a new look for him. Formation distortion. Now it's a double tight end. They run away from the motion. It's White, and the Hawkeyes were there. They did not yield a first down. That is a very big defensive play. Larry Station, 36. One of the first to step up in the hole and plug it. Officials are calling timeout. I don't know whether they... It's a referee's timeout or someone called timeout down here. Oh, Iowa called it. Wants to make sure they punt it into the wind, you see. 45 seconds left to go. That was a key play. If Michigan State gets the first down, they would be able to maintain possession and they would get the wind in the next quarter and kick down wind. Now they're going to have to kick the ball into the wind. Callister goes to the Spartan sideline. Meanwhile, being assisted off the field is number 76. Jeff Cross was shaken up on the play. Another left tackle. Looks like it might be an ankle or a knee. Sure hope it's nothing serious. Well, the Big Ten gets underway today, and what a conference race it's going to be. And in two weeks, we will bring you the Boilermakers of Purdue, led by Jim Everett, against the Buckeyes of Ohio State. And Keith Byers due to return by then. And we will follow that with the Michigan Wolverines against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Montgomery will punt into the win. Not a good punt. Happel, however, lets it roll inside the 35 to about the 32 and 34 seconds to go here in the first quarter on that 38 yard punt with Oklahoma in high gear, even though they lost those tailbacks to Johnson. And the two who are tied, Pat Hayden's been bringing you highlights of that action. Oklahoma State mm, that's for a the surprise. full. And Michigan looking for four in a row. Chuck Long trying to quiet the crowd just a bit. The wave was beginning, and of course he's been calling so many plays at the line of scrimmage. He wants those wide receivers to hear him. He moves Halverson further outside. He's going to come in his direction underneath Rowe. And Rowe brings him down out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Now, one of the things that we might look later on in this game is a defense by Michigan State that might bait him into that out pattern and then roll up with a corner man to go for the interception. It's a coverage that they have used in the past. Clock is running down, closing seconds in the opening quarter here. And time has run out with Iowa leading by seven. We're going to return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. Great to be a cheerleader. 
when your football team is ranked number one. I'm Brett Musburger along with Eric Parsegan. We're in Iowa City, Iowa, and the Hawkeyes lead Michigan State seven to nothing. But Eric, you have to be impressed with what the Spartans have done so far. They had an excellent quarter. They maintained possession of the ball for 11 minutes, and I know George Perlis, if you did said told him earlier that they were going to have it for 11 minutes he'd been delighted but they gave the big play that 60 yard touchdown and that really hurt him that put him behind in the context here is Ronnie Harmon got to the short side of the field and gets Iowa a first down we just checked with the game officials and the Hawkeyes were officially charged with two timeouts in the opening quarter and I'm not so sure I would have used the second one with only 45 seconds to go, even though they wanted the win, Coach. Well, they wanted the win, but they also wanted to save as much time as they could on that 45-second clock so they would have the win when they got the ball. They were only able to get one playoff uh, to utilize it. Now they're going to be into the win, although their field position is not too bad. First and 10 at the 45. They run the fullback of Bush straight ahead. The key play was this one. Chuck Long, who had been throwing underneath the left corner, this time went for the home run. And they had the track star, Robert Smith, number two, flanked outside, and he busted free. And it was a 60-yard touchdown, and that is the difference so far. It is second and six for Long and the Hawkeyes. Here's Ronnie Harmon. First down and a great run. He left a few white shirts behind him, didn't he? Didn't look like the play was that well blocked. Ronnie Harmon, another great back, left white shirts on the turf behind him. Let's take a look at it here from, there you see number 31, Harmon. There's a tackler that misses. There's three or four of them right there. They finally get him down, but that's a good job of running by Ronnie Harmon. That was Joseph Curran, 94, one of the tackles who finally came from behind. So in the first quarter, it is Long's passing, and here it looks like they may feature the running of Ronnie Hart. Long will throw it on this underneath the Smith complete. And coming up was Crum to knock him down, number 35. And they'll come up with a third and about two, it looks like. Brent, they're picking this. They get the corner. He's soft. They just run the out pattern. Long just rolls left. Turn out right there. They've done this. It's Bobby Smith again. They're, they're so frightened now because Smith burned them with that 60 yard that, yard that you just replayed there. Coach, we can't say enough about the Hawkeye offensive line. Perlis's famed defense is not getting the penetration. They are not putting any pressure on Long. This time he will run, and Harmon jukes and gets free. He's at the 20. The great moves of Ronnie Harmon. <laughs> Ronnie Harmon, who broke his leg in two places late last season, is just now rounding into form. And today, Hayden said, I feel he'll run like the Harmon of old, showing you a move there as he just slips that leg past the would-be tackler. Those are things you can't coach. <laughs> You're right. That's what you'd like to recruit. All the coaches in America would like to have a back like Ronnie Harmon. Ball is down to the 18-yard line of the Spartans, first and 10. Long will throw it. Tight end flag is open. And he bullies his way to a touchdown. What a second effort. Phil Parker could not bring him down. the extra point his leg will be worn out midway through the season <laughs> missing on that one he did not kick in practice this week because of a slight injury and Hayden Fry was concerned about it. number 86 is Mike Flagg 
6'6", 244 pounds. Phil Parker comes in here, number 32. He can't get him down. About three or four other Michigan State Spartans get on him, but Flag carries him into the end zone. But keep in mind, he's no little fella. 6'6", 244. Flag has replaced Jonathan Hayes, who was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. The Hawkeyes thought this might be a problem area. But Parker, who was all Big Ten, cannot wrap him up. The Hawkeyes have a tight end. Whitney. Ninth day, they became number one. <laughs> Long is already eight for nine for 121 yards and two TDs. Not Whoa. a bad afternoon. They look tough, don't they? Oh, they really do. That drive in particular, featuring Ronnie Harmon, who's a great runner in Long Farm, and then Flag all of a sudden comes into the picture. I didn't realize it until, I guess, Thursday when we came out here how large that tight end is. He's a big man and strong. This is a tough period for Michigan State. George Perlis does not want to be down two touchdowns to Iowa. He must get something going right away. Houtman kicks it to the short man on the squib. And the Hawkeyes finally bring the tight end Bush roll down. Now Michigan State next week will be playing Michigan. And right now, Michigan is taking on Wisconsin. Let's go back to New York and get an update on that one. Pat? Grant, that Michigan defense continues to come up with big plays. Here it's an interception thrown by Mike Howard. The ball is late down the middle. You can't do that. Garland Rivers is there to make the play and the touchdown. Bo's got that defense planned. Let's go back to Brent Nero. Garland Rivers is one of my favorite players. You'll see him next week against Michigan State. Some folks counted out Bo Schembeiper a little too early, didn't they? Now McAllister rolls. First down for the Spartans. Almost intercepted. And again, it was Norvell, 45. He's all over the place. <laughs> He's having quite an afternoon. Looked like he was going to intercept that football. That is McAllister's first incompletion. Wouldn't you know it? You get the wind at your back. <laughs> yeah. Just an out pattern, but Norvell had good ball reaction while it was in the air. There you see it. Goes right through his hands. He has it momentarily, and then it slips through. Not sure McAllister read the coverage, but that second man was going to rotate in there with Sims. He thought he had him one-on-one -on -one over at this side. Now he comes back with White to the short side on the run, and Lorenzo battles his way for a gain. Well, we've got two good running backs in this one. Sure do. He stepped out of bounds there, though, after about a three- or four-yard gain. It looked like he got six and seven, almost up to eight, but the ball's marked uh, with just about a three-and-a-half-yard gain. So that'll leave them with a third and seven yard situation. But the one thing they have now is Montgomery will be kicking downwind. And when he was practicing, he was putting them almost in the end zone from that spot there. Play fake. Goes for the home run. Ingram is open. He's got it inside the 10 yard line. Mark Ingram got behind the secondary. It's Ken Sims is the man that he beat. McAllister had great time. He put it up in the air and watched Ingram run on it. Sims, number nine, was two steps short. Great throw, great catch, and a big play for Michigan, something they have not been getting. McAllister is having quite a day. The freshman from Pompano Beach, Florida. With the wind at his back, he just hit the veteran wideout Mark Ingram out of Northwestern High School in Flint, Michigan, and the Spartans with an opportunity to jump right back in this one. Double tight. Here's White trying to get outside, and he cannot get free. Hap Peterson, the nose guard, penetrated. Got a hold of him, and number 50 says, you're going nowhere. Mitch Watchman, the number 62, the Michigan State Center, has got his hands full with Peterson right there. He's come free. Watch right here, the center, Watchman, trying to block Peterson. He runs right through. He even tries to get help from Morris, number 21, but doesn't do it. And he makes the play on White. He's, uh, he's given him a lot of problems in the running game. Two-yard loss. McAllister rolls to the right, being chased by Peterson. Now he gets away, incomplete, into the stands, almost in the grasp. Number 99, Richard Pryor. 
McAllister had Butch roll open the tight end as he broke out. He did not see him soon enough, and by the time he did see him, he was covered. So he had to throw the ball away. Good judgment on it, because no one was open. What do you think Perlis will do now with McAllister? He's got to call a little timeout and talk about it. Going to call timeout. I think it's important enough to bring him over to the sideline and talk about it. So uh, McAllister and the Michigan State offense huddles around Perlis. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. There are lots of furnace coverage. One on one. Almost botched up. McAllister keeps it like he's running an option, and he'll get strung out at the 15-yard line. Well, he decided to go with an option play, something that they hadn't shown, but the, the coordination is not good. He fakes to the fullback, and McAllister and Morse, number 21, he's not in the proper position to option him. He was behind him, so he couldn't throw the ball off. The timing was off. It probably would have been a pretty good play had Morris come in front of McAllister so he could deal the ball off. Chris Caudell will attempt a 32-yard field goal. Kick is on its way, and it's good. Michigan State is on the board. And that missed extra point looms large right now because Michigan State is down by 10 rather than 11. We'll be right back. You watch the left guard here. He will pull and run into the fullback and forces McAllister deep, and the timing of that option play is off. Let's take a look. The left guard pulls. Watch the fullback collide. Forces McAllister way out of the line, and he's not able to option. Morris, number 21, is way behind as the option man. McAllister has no choice but to run it down to the sideline and they get the three points. Arrow, that's the danger of installing something like the option during the season. The timing, the coordination missing a little bit there. That's an excellent point. You put something in new and you haven't worked on it, you get a situation where you had that collision. The timing was way off. Montgomery, the punter, will kick it off. Robert Smith and Ronnie Harmon are back at the goal line for the Hawkeyes. We've got 11.34 to go. Kickoff is going to be short. It'll be Harmon. 15, 20, 25, 30. Brought down finally at the 37 yard line. And it was Craig Johnson, number 28, one of the last men to have a shot at Harmon. Brought him down. Next week, more Big Ten action. It's the Wolverines of Michigan trying to stay unbeaten this afternoon. And last check with Pat Hayden, of course. They were still ahead. Of Wisconsin, the Badgers normally give the Wolverines a lot of trouble. You'll see them against the Spartans. Coached by George Furless, who says our program is still a couple years away, but we're on the right track. Here is Harmon. Carefully following his blockers, looking for the daylight, and Kelly Quinn, number 93, who has been relatively quiet here this afternoon. Haight is doing a good job blocking on him. Getting excellent pass protection when Long goes back to throw. Michigan State has not been able to get anywhere near him. A, week, a year ago, when Long was hurt and had a bad knee and ankle, they were able to sack him two or three times, but they haven't been anywhere near this afternoon. Second and six. Other audible. Long is back. Incomplete. That's a good job by Phil Parker coming in and making contact and knocking the ball loose. Long, first time Long had to scramble a little bit too. One of the things about Chuck Long that you have to admire, he very seldom throws the real bad pass. Doesn't give you that cheap interception. You've got to work hard. And that has come with experience. In that bowl game out in Anaheim, California, the inaugural Freedom Bowl, six touchdown passes. That's the most thrown by a quarterback in any bowl game in history. Third and six. Here's Harmon, big hole in the middle of that front. And finally, Timothy Moore brought him down. Mark Sinliger and Tom Humphrey 
opened up that hole for the Hawkeyes. Well, a good defensive series for the Spartans, forcing a, a punt, because that's a dangerous offensive team with Long and Harmon in that group. Costrabala, left-footed punter. Not a real good punt. Down inside the 40 at about the 37-yard line, so 9.58 left. 21-yard punt. And Hayden is speaking to the young man. Yeah, Hayden Fry's staff spent much of the summer studying how to attack Perlis's stunting, looping defense. And the way they're blocking it here today, you would have to say that they've been successful in those hours spent watching reels of film. They were really concerned about it, but you, from the evidence we've seen thus far, they've done a good job. First and ten. Let's see if McAllister can rally the Spartans again. Play fake. He's got time. Home run. Wants rising incomplete. He just overthrew him at the ten-yard line. Tim Sims was on the coverage. I guess they liked what they had seen in the previous drive when he hit Ingram. They're going to try it again. He had him open. Reisman was past the defender, but uh, he just overthrew him just a tad. Devon Mitchell, number 21 there, one of the outstanding free safeties. The walk-on here turned out to be a great football player. Gee, look at these. Second and ten. McAllister a roll to the left. Steps up, hits his own lineman, and there's a penalty flag down. John Breeze brought him down. This could be defensive holding. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Good. Butch Roll was trying to get free the Spartan tight end era. Good call. So the penalty goes against the Hawkeyes and the Spartans get a break. Yeah. They trail 13 3 9 44 left here in the first half. The Hawkeyes have scored two touchdowns here this afternoon and missed an extra point. And at halftime, of course, Jim Nance and Pat Hayden will have all the information and highlights for you on the Prudential College Football Report. Big, big night for Eddie Robinson. Going for the victory. That would break Bear Bryant's record. And Jim will be talking to him live from Dallas at halftime. First and ten. McAllister coming to the right. Big Jeff Dross got him out of the pocket. Throws back complete. Rising. He's got an alley in speed. Across the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10. Down to the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan State. A 50-yard touchdown by Michigan State. Off a roll to the right, McAllister throws back to the left, and the Hawkeyes have to know now they are in for a ball game here this afternoon. A quarterback has been discovered in Kinnick Stadium. I said he may blossom today, and I guess he has. Certainly has in the first half here. He avoided the rush, scrambled, and threw the ball to the open receiver. Cadell to attempt the extra point. It's good. The top-ranked Hawkeyes are in for a dogfight. I think McAllister is seeing the field much better. Same bootleg pass. White going one way. McAllister coming the other. And he finds Ryzen right over the middle. Now watch Ryzen does a great job of running against the grain of the defenders. He breaks to the left sideline, picks up a block. He's got excellent speed. And it's a 50-yard touchdown run as he comes down that left sideline before the Hawkeyes can get to him. 
Number 21, Mitchell almost gets it, but he doesn't. That block was thrown by Lorenzo White on Nate Creer, and that opened the way for the touchdown. Iowa City, a redshirt freshman by the name of Bobby McAllister, has completed eight of 11 passes for 170 yards. He has just thrown a touchdown pass, and the Spartans trail the Hawkeyes by three, 13-10. Montgomery, the ball teed up, and now it rolls off that tee. Harmon and Smith are set deep here for the Hawkeyes. Last year, of course, with a Rose Bowl trip on the line, the Spartans came in here and upset Iowa 17-16. I think I'd try to keep that ball away from Harmon if I, if I could. He almost popped it on that last kickoff. He's got the wind with him. He ought to be able to put the ball in the end zone. Sure, let's kick it to Smith. He's only scored a 60-yard <laughs> touchdown here this well, afternoon. Well, no, I said put the ball in the end zone. No return. <laughs> That's why you do that. Oh, no, you didn't do it. Oh, yes, he did. Harmon will down it there, and on the touchback, it'll come out to the 20-yard line, where it'll be first down. Tomorrow, the NFL today will start it at 12.30 Eastern time. The big story in professional football. What has gone wrong with the Washington Redskins? Irv Cross has been in Washington. We'll talk live with the general manager, Bobby Bethard. And then that story developing in Dallas. Those charges of point shaving. Tex Ram, the Cowboy general manager, has a word or two to say about that tomorrow. And we will hear him live at 12.30 Eastern time on the NFL Today. The scoring drive that got George Perlis and the Spartans right back in it. Never in his wildest imagination did he ever dream that McAllister would light up this Hawkeye defense like he has here in the first half. This is a bonus for the Spartans. Harmon, and now the defense. Brings him right down after a one-yard gain. Mark Nichols, number 83. Got original penetration. One of the few times he, the Spartans have gotten a lot of penetration against the Hawkeye offensive line. Feel a momentum shift in here. The Hawkeyes need a couple first downs here to get moving again. But they're fighting the wind along with the Spartans. Second and nine. Deep drop. Complete. He hit Craig Clark, number 49, a tight end. And the Hawkeyes have a first down on that 11-yard gain. You look at it as Chuck Long does. He's six foot four, 213 pounds. He's got good vision. And they've got a bevy of great tight ends. This is Clark along with Murphy and Flagg. They've got a lot of great tight ends on this football team. Under pressure, Long gets it off complete. This time, he hit Flagg. This time they got him down. <laughs> the last time he had the ball in his hands, they couldn't get him down. You know, that time they were blitzing an outside linebacker. Moore was coming hard from Long's right side. He picked him up through to the tight end. But the Spartans are trying to get some pressure here on Long if they can. This is second and five, 750. They run Harmon up the middle, and he gets another first down. Number 41 is Shane Bulla looking right into the camera. He's blocked this time by number 65, Tom Humphrey, I believe it is. And Harmon just pops right through there for a good game. Croston and Humphrey doing a good job that time on the left side of the offensive line. This is first and 10 for the Hawks. Here's Harmon's 12th carry. Squeezed a couple of yards out, so he's gained 59, and Anthony Bell, the linebacker, got him out. 
There is Shane Bulla, and it was a big week for his father. He's named the new head coach, the Buffalo Bills, and we asked him what he thinks about his dad's promotion. I was really thrilled, thrilled and surprised. I didn't, uh, I didn't expect it. I don't think my family expected it right uh, this early in the season, but uh, we're very excited. We wish Hank Bulla nothing but the best up there in Buffalo. It is not going to be easy, but if anyone can turn them around, certainly defensively, it'll be Hank Bulla. Here, his son is trying to rally the Spartans defensively against Chuck Long. Ronnie Harmon on the screen got to the 45 yard line. He's still short of a first down by about three yards. Third down coming up, and again, it was Anthony Bell over there. George Perlis was talking about Anthony Bell yesterday, and he said he's one of his better football players. Even when he goes to the nickel and dime defense with secondary people, he keeps Bell in there because he's fast enough to run with receivers. Another one of those good football players out of the state of Florida. He played high school ball down in Fort Lauderdale. Number 51. He steps up to meet the tight end at the left side of the Michigan State defense. Long throws to the far side incomplete. Over through Helverson. Southwest Conference. A week ago we had Texas holding off Stanford. And a lot of folks say the Razorbacks are the team to watch in the chase for the Cotton Bowl berth. Well, they're having quite an afternoon here. Of course, TCU with Wackers had their problems when he suspended all those players. But Arkansas is a fine football team. Well, let's see what Kostrabala does this time, Plenty. Morris will let it go on into the end zone for the touchback. 6.25, and Michigan State again will have the wind at its back. They trail the top rank Iowa Hawkeyes by three points, and we'll be right back. Great size. He studies that Iowa defense. Now he's calling Audible. Here's White banging for a couple of yards. You can just feel McAllister's confidence growing here this afternoon. The way he comes to the line of scrimmage, the way he looks out at that defense, checks over to the sideline, reads his play. Then he came up and he called an audible. Georgia told us last night that one of the problems when you deal with a freshman quarterback is he's not completely familiar yet with his system and can't check off as well as a veteran like Dave Urema would. He had made a couple of calls in the ball games that did not allow him for the proper protection. And he got sacked a couple of times. And of course, it looks like he's making the right calls now. He rolls to the right. Complete again. This one to Ingram. He's Ken really, Sims makes the tackle. He's really on target, isn't he? I mean, just an out pattern. He's just throwing the ball with great confidence. George Perlis has got to be pleased with that. The Hawkeyes are in a ball game. He's now nine for 12, 179 yards. As a matter of fact, coming into this ball game, Brent, some of that yardage that we saw on the screen was uh, Dave Uremas. And now uh, McAllister came into this ball game with total in two ball games of 99 yards, averaging about not just under 50 yards a game. Now, of course, you can even have him throw on first down. He's been so good, and there he is. Going long, but he has overthrown his receiver. Nate Creer had a shot to intercept. And it went out of bounds. Ingram was the receiver on the far sideline. Good coverage that time. I think that he probably, I don't know, he may have tried to overshoot that just to throw it away I, because uh, there were no receivers open there. Coverage was excellent. That is a strong, strong arm he possesses. He got a great arm. Five fourteen to go here in the first half. Iowa leading Michigan State. This is the 90th anniversary of football on the Big Ten. Oops. That time they busted the snap count. Tony Menderick, the left tackle, just a freshman from Oakville, Ontario. 6'6, 269. Wanted to get to him a little soon. Dead ball, ball start on the offense. So with the Big Ten underway, the Illini and Ohio State tied. They're in the third quarter in Champaign. 
Michigan running it up 30 to 6. Uh oh. How'd that happen? <laughs> <laughs> and next week, we've got the Michigan Wolverines who figure to be 4 0 up against these Michigan State Spartans who are developing here this afternoon into a fine football team. Of course, they've already handled Arizona State at home. We shouldn't overlook that victory. Arizona State better than anybody Iowa has beaten. McAllister back. Left side, he's got Ingram complete again. And Creer takes him out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. It'll be short of a first down. Now the Buckeyes have just scored their third touchdown. Again, they are without Keith Byers. Broke his foot before the season even started. And they hope to have him back in a couple of weeks when the Buckeyes take on Purdue here on CBS. Third and three. Here is White, and he is short of a first down. Jeff Dross, number 76. He's at the bottom of that pile. This is about the third time that Iowa has stopped the Spartans on short yardage situations. Jeff Dross, number 36, along with Norvell coming in there, number 45. 37 is George Davis. They really really played good defense on that short guarding situation. Now Montgomery set to punt. Smith and Happel are deep for the Hawks. Happel at the 18 at the 20 yard line. Brought down right there by Shane Bulla number 41 as George Perlis told us my regulars will be on those specialty teams. Well, it just showed you why. How about our quarterback comparison? We've got one who's a Heisman Trophy candidate and the other who's an emerging freshman here. Well, the thing that's interesting about this is that Long was number one in the conference in most all the statistics. Bobby McAllister, I shouldn't say Bobby McAllister, but Michigan State was dead last in scoring offense, pass offense, and total offense. You know, how do you figure this game? Long to throw on first down. Good protection over the middle. Complete to Helberson. Helberson out to the 37 yard line. A 16 yard gain by the Hawkeyes. And here's Chuck Long again executing beautifully. He had beautiful time. Just fakes a sweep to the left. He waits, he waits, he waits. Finally, Halverson over the middle, wide open between the seams of the linebackers in a zone. And beautiful job of protection. When you give Long that kind of time, he's going to complete passes. I mean, all the way down the field. He cannot get that kind of time. 65, Tom Humphrey. Watch his guard. Look at his feet, how he positions them, balances, holds them off, and now they run Harmon. And he is checked out of bounds. Kelly Quinn, 93, was over there. He ran a long ways to get at him that time, showing you his speed. Might see a screen or a draw in here with three and a half minutes, less than three and a half minutes to go. They need 15 yards. They're a good screening team. Audible. Short drop and a pop to Happel. Caught it out of bounds at the 38 yard line, but this will still leave Iowa with about a third and nine. Well, they read the coverages and he took the out pattern, but I don't think it was in a, it was, they picked up six yards on the play, but they still have third and nine now. There are the one man who has been open for Iowa here this afternoon whenever they want him is that tight end flag. He scored their touchdown when he held off about three would be tacklers. They seem to be able to get him in the middle of this Michigan State defense to find a seam if they can. Long is straight back. And this time he will not get it off. He is sacked for the first time here this afternoon. 
John Jones got in and broke the tackle for the first time. The offensive protection did not hold up. Long went back, and one of the reasons was the secondary had covered flag. He was ready to go to him. He had to hold up, and that gave Jones just enough time to beat the block and get in on the tackle. Costrabala hits this one better than he's connected with any punt here this afternoon. Gets an Iowa roll. And it'll be out of bounds at the 19-yard line. 227 for McAllister. A 51-yard punt. And at halftime, of course, Jim Nance and Pat Hayden, and they'll be talking with Eddie Robinson, the great coach out of Grambling. He goes for the record tonight down in Texas. Who's that against? Prairie View A&M? That's who it is. Well, he's had a marvelous career down at Grambling. Terrific. And there is Dennison leading DePaul at the half, 14-7. Folks, to the best of my knowledge, that's the last of the big schools using the single wing. I'm sure that there are some Division three teams using it. But Dennison scored 63 points last week. Now they lead here again this afternoon. Right on the draw. Daylight runs into his own man. Ricochets like a pinball in the other direction and gets out to the 45. Just a quick little draw to the inside, and when he finds daylight, he made 26 yards on that play. He was blocked well at the hole, but when he gets into that secondary, he wiggles all over the place. How'd you like to catch him? Look at the hole in there, beautifully blocked. When he pops through there, he's got all kinds of moves. You see the Hawkeyes trying to chase him down. He just runs all over the field. They took advantage of that Hawkeye pursuit, started a little misdirection and opened it up, and White did the rest, and now it's first and 10. McAllister, a short drop, quick pop to Ingram, who drops it. White has 18 carries and 75 yards. Last year, in the same field, White carried the ball 27 times and only made 54 yards against this football team. So he's way above that already. Watch now and see if the ball isn't tipped in this sequence. Jeff Drost does indeed get a hand on it. That's why they like those tackles about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and get the hand. The blitz is coming. They step around it. It's White, and he's got a first down inside of the two-minute mark here in the first half. Caught the linebacker blitz perfect that time. Right side linebacker, I believe it was Station, started the blitz. He was blocked to the outside, and that's exactly where White hit. Watch right here. Number 36 station comes right through. He's blocked to the outside. White pops right through that hole. Beautiful blocking, beautiful call. And again, White running the ball. Just an outstanding back. McAllister with the Spartans at the line of scrimmage. Ball is at the 43. Rolls to the right. And he's brought down that time. And again, it was big Jeff Ross, number 76. What a game he's having here this afternoon. Peterson's been a little quiet the last few series. He had a great first quarter, early part of the second quarter. Now Drost has stepped in and doing a great job. Second and 14. Ryzen goes up to the left. Ingram is down to McAllister's right or the short side. Short drop complete to Ryzen. Station misses him, but he's surrounded and he will go nowhere. I thought Nate Creer played that very well. He really did. As a matter of fact, the whole Hawkeyes closed down on Ingram. I mean, Ryzen. And he is really a dangerous runner, as we've seen earlier. But the Hawkeyes, you can just see from up here, everybody just closing down with great pursuit. Got a timeout here. And you're watching Big Ten football. Ten schools, and they pursue excellence in all fields. And they're back in Iowa City. I'm Brent Musburger, along with Errol Parsegan. The number one ranked Iowa Hawkeyes in a dogfight as the Big Ten Conference gets underway. And Michigan State has found a freshman quarterback. Bobby McAllister, number eight. Eyes that defense, third and 11. 
swing. Here's White. Gets to the 40. And Hap Peterson, number 50, coming from behind. Brought him down. He got to the 39-yard line. I don't think there's any need to kick it. There's 23 seconds left to go. I'd use the fourth down situation, try to get into field goal position with an out pattern of some sort. 17 seconds. I wouldn't be afraid to surrender the ball at that field position with that time. They're letting the clock run down. Six, five, four, three, two. It has run down to one second, but one of the officials is signaling that McAllister did call a timeout with one second. Now, if he sets up a field goal with one second to go, of course, then he can kill the clock right here. But I'll tell you, that's waiting too long. I really do. I think he should have saved about nine or ten seconds on the clock to give a play and uh, an opportunity to kick a field goal if they happen to make have a pass completion. Era, the, the staff over there, in fairness to that coaching staff, they were trying to get McAllister to call timeout at about the 10 second mark. He had his back to him and he didn't realize it. And they were yelling at him as he ran away from the bench. So they will spot the ball down on the 46 yard line. So it'll be a 56 yard attempt by Cardell. Chris Cardell, who has already connected on one field goal here from 32 yards and missed from 51 yards, will try his third field goal of the game. Well, he's got a chance there with uh, a little wind helping. Snap. The kick is up. And it's no good. The end of the first half, but better than you expected, right? The Spartans are hanging tough here in Iowa City. It's 13-10. We got one cooking. I'm 32 years old, and I'm 10. Hayden Fry and his assistant coaches going over the final preparations here for the second half. And so frequently it's the adjustments that a coaching staff will make that spells the difference between winning or losing. And when he's ahead of you, he usually doesn't ease up. But in no way is he relaxing about what George Perlis and the Spartans are accomplishing here this afternoon. Iowa will kick it off and Michigan State will work against the wind. They deferred and it means that the Spartans will have the win at their back for the final 15 minutes. It could be a very key factor. Outland is putting the ball on the tee for the Hawkeyes. Johnson back deep to return it here for the Spartans. More like a November afternoon than one in October in Iowa City. Gray sky here in the Midwest. To the short man. Picked up by Altabelli. And he gets it back to the 28 yard line. How the quarterbacks made out in the first half. Bobby McAllister, the big story. And the two big running backs. Lorenzo White is out rushing Ronnie Harmon of Iowa. And the linebacker. Now McAllister back to work again and here is White. White running behind the right side of that Michigan State offense and again Hap Peterson number 50 so active getting out there to help out. Early Air Force of course has had the jinx on Jerry Faust since he took over as the head coach. Well, they've won three in a row. Second down and six. Motion by the tight end. White will run behind him. White trying to turn the corner. Gets past Sims, and he's finally ridden out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Larry Station, number 36, the linebacker, brought him down. The honors student here at Iowa makes the all-academic team regularly in the Big Ten. 
calls the defensive signal. He has ever since he was a freshman. Came from Omaha. He's won the Cornhuskers. Let get away. Now he's matched against the Spartan attack. Caden Fry says he's really a well-disciplined individual. Has his priorities all straight. It is White coming back for the first down. Beautiful job. Peterson veered to the field that time. The center watchman, which did a good job on one of the previous uh, draws in the first half, did exactly the same thing that time. Peterson ran himself out of it. White cut against the grain. A beautiful, well-blocked play. Watch here. Peterson, number 50. Watchman blocks him clear to the right. Number 62 there. You see White hide right behind that and then pick the daylight on the draw. That's 101 yards rushing for White. That's his sixth straight. 100-yard game, and of course that is a Michigan State record. And that breaks Eric Allen's former mark, and here he comes again, adding more yards to that total, getting close to the 45-yard line, and again it was Station who had to come over and get him out of bounds. Coming into the ball game, uh, Michigan State was averaging 158 yards rushing, and Lorenzo was getting 140 some of that himself. 146 as a matter of fact. Motion again by the tight end. McAllister on the roll to the right. Peterson chasing after him. Now Station is there. And he throws it complete. Butch Roll, the tight end, gets across midfield to the 49-yard line. Norvell bringing him down, and there is a penalty flag down. May have been a face mask. Yep. Good call. Good call, Brent. The coverage was much better that time uh, by the uh, Hawkeyes. He had the receivers pretty well covered and forced McAllister all the way to the sideline, but he still hit it. So the Spartans mounting a drive here early in the second half. Face mask, under defense, penalize the end of the run, first down. You know, Brent, this is a game where, you know, you think this is, this is not going against what you anticipated, but it isn't that the Hawkeyes are playing poorly. It's that Michigan State is playing an outstanding football game. They've got a dimension to their offense now that they didn't have before. Using the tight end in motion. Blocking straight up. Running white. Gets to the corner before he's banged out of bounds by Norvell. So we want to congratulate the Toronto Blue Jays who have won the American League's Eastern Division 5-1 over the New York Yankees. But I imagine there were more than just a few nervous stomachs in the city of Toronto after what occurred last night. With the Jays allowing the Yankees to come from behind with two out in the ninth inning. But now it's over. And the Jays will go on to play either Kansas City or California for the American League Championship. Again, the tight end in motion. And they run white behind the motion man. Steps out of bounds. That's going to leave them about third and four. Devon Mitchell, 21, sealed it up that time. Trying to get to the corner to the perimeter of the defense. That time Iowa supported well, although the linemen were blocked. They got a good game plan. Michigan State has come in here with an excellent game plan. Darrell yeah, will see if they run white on one of those counter moves. Draw play here. They've also used McAllister on a roll very effectively. Comes to the left. Goes to the tight end. Trying to get the first down. Norvell had him wrapped up, and he got him out of bounds short of it. It's going to be an interesting call for George Perlis. He's looking at fourth down and about two from the 30. Well, I guess it's less than where he, to where he marks it. That's one. He's going for it. He's going for it. But keep in mind, in the first half, three times Hawkeye stopped him. Right now. 
think what happened era the coaching staff was like you they thought it was fourth and two and then they realized that it was going to be spotted closer we've got a timeout fourth and one George Perlis has huddled with his offensive team they'll go for the first down here trailing by three 13 minutes to go in the third quarter I think play fake roll right first down slammed down hard inside the 25 yard line station got an arm and McAllister gets up a little slowly that time great call by Michigan State fake the ball to the inside McAllister gets outside the containment he's got a receiver open but he is so wide open himself he decides to run with the ball everybody took the fake to the inside and he's clean down the sideline they're putting a lot of pressure on that Iowa defense great call Era again in that sequence the tight end butch roll was wide open if they want to come back with that look they've got him as a receiver this is first and ten on the 23 here comes white slashes inside he's loose Michigan State leads a 23 yard touchdown run by Lorenzo white Trailing 13 to nothing. Michigan State has come roaring back here to score two touchdowns and kick a field goal. They lead for the first time in this game, and there's the young man who got them in the end zone. Chris Caudell adds the extra point. Do you remember a year ago? Anytime you were ranked number one. You seem to lose the following Saturday. Look at Lorenzo White from the end zone. Get beautiful blocking. Split the seam right there. The formation is putting a lot of pressure on the Iowa defense. They're stretching it with a combination. Uh, two wide outs to the left and a wing to the right. And Iowa is not handling it well. Lorenzo White is running beautifully. John a... Wojciechowski, number 73, helped blow open that hole for the Spartans. And White said, we got it. We got the lead, but the Hawkeyes are dangerous. On that fourth down and one, watch and see what Lorenzo White does. He comes in here and blocks this firing left linebacker right there after McAllister faked the ball to him. Take a look and watch Lorenzo White. Not only a great runner, but he was the key man in this play. The linebacker station comes free. The block is right there by Lorenzo White, and McAllister gets outside the contain. He has an open receiver. He can either run or pass. What a stunner unfolding here in Iowa City. Michigan State, an 18-point underdog, leading by four. 12.30 to go in the third. Montgomery to kick it off for George Perlis. Keeps it on the ground. Goes all the way through to Harmon, who has trouble getting the handle at the 10. Running backwards. The Spartans in pursuit. They get him out at the 19-yard line. John Miller. And the St. Louis Cardinals have wrapped up a divisional race. And to get the story, here's Jim Nance. Brett, John Tudor did it once more, his 21st victory of the year. Of four hitters, Tudor went the entire distance. The Cardinals clinched the National League East. Isn't it ironic the Mets and Yankees were both eliminated within minutes? Brett, back to you. It sure is, and so a great baseball season comes to an unhappy conclusion in New York City. It is first and ten for the Hawks, and they come with Ronnie Harmon. A fake to the fullback that time. Encounter with Harmon, and the Spartans were ready. Yielding a couple of yards, this will be second and eight, and the play is being shuttled in from the sideline by Robert Smith, who now comes back a step or two. They won't have much time to get this play off. Long gets quickly into the huddle. 
Oh, the Buckeyes in Illinois. Last year they played a great game in that one, too. Illinois tying it up again there in the fourth quarter. Long with a deep drop. Over the middle. Complete for the first down to Mike Flagg. While we were mentioning Ohio State and Illinois, Earl, there's somebody back in Columbus, Ohio, in the hospital. But we certainly want to send along our best wishes. Certainly do. I know he's been hospitalized there for a while, and I worked for him. We're back in 1950. He gave me my start in coaching when he hired me as the freshman coach at Miami. Woody suffering a heart attack, and Woody, we wish you nothing but the best. We hear you're coming along fine. Expect to see you in a couple of weeks. Here comes Ronnie Harmon now, trying to get the corner turn. Penalty marker has been thrown. Curran helped bring him down. This may be a holding call. Mm. The Hawkeyes looked dominant in the first quarter, but since then, George Perlis and the Spartans have taken it away from them. Well, he was telling us, he says, you don't have to worry about my team hitting, and certainly they've done that, and they've brought the defense that was so successful for him at Pittsburgh with a lot of stunts on the inside, as you mentioned earlier, and the running game has been, they've forced an inconsistency on the part of the Hawkeye running game. Long is without question their strong suit. The numbers that help tell you the story, the most important, of course, are up there on that scoreboard, 17-13, Michigan State with the lead, 11-18 to go, and era. how did George describe this team as a 1950s bunch? 1950s, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what that means. Well, that means no face masks, <laughs> leather helmets. You know, guys say, yeah. come on, let's play. <laughs> guys going both ways. Huh? <laughs> Here's first down. Long now moving his pocket to the right. Plenty of time back over the middle of half hole. They'll have about three and a half yards to go for the first down. Don't you like those guys like Apple, number 40? They come into the conference and people say he's too slow, he's too small, they can't do anything. Watch him make a cut. All he does is get open and watch these hands. And, and look exactly where Long puts it, too. I tell you, he's dangerous. That's the strong suit of the Hawkeyes. I think they're going to have to, they're going to beat this Michigan State team. They're going to have to do it, throw the ball with Long. Well, they're number one. Let's prove it right here this afternoon. 10.26 to go in the third. Here comes the big back, Harmon. The Spartans bringing him out to the sideline. He still squeezes out a first down. The mark of a great one. Bill Parker, 32, up to Bammy. Ah, the Big Ten Conference, where the big crowds are in college football. Next week, we'll see these Spartans. Oh, if they upset Iowa here this afternoon, and Michigan comes in unbeaten. You think we won't have an afternoon? Yeah. I may have to leave the Dodgers and the Cardinals <laughs> early. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> First and ten. Ball on the 49-yard line. The fullback Bush straight ahead. They only use him to keep a defense honest. He's primarily a blocker. Timothy Moore, 42, the linebacker, coming up to swat him down. Now it's second and eight. 9.54. Crowd is quiet. They expected more from the Hawkeyes here this afternoon. Split backs this time. What a blitz on. He still gets it off the Happel intercepted. He overthrew him. And Parker with the ball is marked where his knee is down just inside the 30-yard line. Long's first interception and a big turnover. And the receiver was open as you watch here. Long just overshoots him. This is the first blitz that they put on that they're really getting near him right there. There's the throw. He just overthrows him right there. The defender covering was behind him. And, of course, Parker picks the ball off as a free safety. Just wait for it. Now, remember, Parker was burned earlier in this game when Flagg broke his tackle and battled into the end zone. This time, Parker prevails with the interception. Now it's McAllister again. Here's the tight end in motion. Perlis's formation. Now it's White, the tailback, to the corner. 
And he is out of bounds. It'll be marked at about the 34-yard line. Butch Roll, the tight end, the man in motion, an era that formation is working so well. They're coming up to the line of scrimmage. They're reading the coverage. They're going to the weak spot or the soft spot of the defense. And Iowa's having trouble because of White's great speed. He gets to the corner, gets leverage to the weak side of the formation. Aiden Fry going over things with his quarterback, Chuck Long. You told me before this game that you liked White a lot. I really did. He's 27 for 137 yards already. And one touchdown. Here's his 28th carry. Look at that run. Penalty marker is down. White is written out of bounds at the 45. Nate Creer, 29, took him out. May have been the split end who was downfield, rising, helping to block on that play, era. Now watch at the bottom of your screen right here. You see Risen's right arm. <laughs> that wasn't holding, folks. That was tackling. Boy, a good call by the officials and a real nice picture. So the fans can see why that call was made. Speaking of good pictures, our director down in the truck. Joe Assetti, and we certainly want to send along our best wishes to his mother, who has been watching faithfully every week. And Helen Assetti, we want you to know that Big Joe does a great job. I know you haven't been feeling well the last few weeks, but we're all thinking about you here in Iowa. Second down and four. White cuts back again against that green and squeezes out close to another first down. He may have it depending on where they spot the ball. Let's take a look at the right, right guard, Wojciechowski, here. Blocks down to the inside. Peterson, they're really doubling on Peterson. The thing that White is doing, I think, is doing an outstanding job of, is he allows the defenders to go ahead and run to the field and cuts back against it. That was Larry Station, the big linebacker, who finally stepped in there, and here's the measurement. He's got it. Barely. 9-12. Third period. You can just tell by how the two benches are reacting. Who's ahead in this game right now? Sure can. Momentum shifted in the game and certainly is on the side of the Spartans here. Iowa needs a play. They need a big defensive play. First and ten. The ball is at the 40. Here's the young man who's authored this upset so far. Bobby McAllister out of the state of Florida. The red shirt freshman. He's got his tight end in motion. They'll run in that direction. And White's got another big hole. And the tight end did it again. Inside the 40 with Vino Belk, number 95, just blowing that corner open with that block. And they cannot solve that formation. You see the tight end lead blocks and White has such great speed, he gets out of the contain here, turns into where the daylight is. You see Devon Mitchell trying to get there, the free safety, and he can't. And Sims finally brings him down, number nine, to save it from going for a score. 174 yards, Lorenzo White has rushed for here this afternoon. Looking for daylight, comes back into the heart of the defense. May have still gained a couple of yards. Jeff Drouse still there. I had seen some highlight film on him earlier, and I really liked White the way he ran. He, he's got great peripheral vision. He's able to read the defenders and always cuts to some kind of a daylight. And certainly we've seen him do it here this afternoon. He's a great running back. Second and eight for McAllister. Ingram is split to the left. He'll roll in that direction. He's got him inside the 25. Ingram is loose. Does not score as Nate Greer, with one hand on his jersey, kept him from getting into the end zone. But it was a 36-yard gain, and the Spartans are knocking on the door again. Watching the linebacker, there's no under, underneath coverage, and he's wide open. McAllister turns. He's got one-on-one, -on -one, no one in between to shelter it. Ingram catches the ball, and you see 29, Nate Greer trying to chase him down, finally pulls him down by the shirt, but there was no help on the inside. 
What a great job by this offensive line. Man Derek and Rogers and Watchman and Wojciechowski. Giving the young man time and he drills his receiver. Here's first and goal. McAllister trying to follow his center and he is stacked up. The heart of that defense, of course, would be number 50, Hap Peterson. Goal line with the tackles pinching in down there and coming underneath. Now it'll be second and goal. It looked as though only the center knew the snap count that time. And he tried to lead the way for the quarterback. Trying to sneak it in, try to get it in the easiest way, but Iowa was in there stacked and stopped the play. The wide side of the field would be to McAllister's right. And now he puts his wing back on that side. Here is White coming to the short side. Touchdown. And George Perlis and the Spartans are authoring an upset. White has carried 32 times arrow for 177 yards. And this, and this is against a team that has led the Big Ten Conference in total defense three of the last four years, was leading the nation in rushing defense. This is just a pitch, but look at the hole. I think you and I could have gone through that one. Lorenzo found it easier than we would have, though. Cardell attempting the extra point. Bad snap, but they got it down in time, and it's good. Michigan State taking the lead. And we go one more time. Can the Hawkeyes solve Lorenzo White? They haven't here so far, and now the heat is on. We are back live, Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa, and Michigan State with a chance of upsetting the number one ranked team in the nation. Lorenzo White has done a job against Hayden Fry's defense here this afternoon. Montgomery takes it in Ronnie Harmon's direction and Harmon alertly let the ball go out of bounds at the one yard line. A year ago I mentioned that Ohio State Illinois turned in a tremendous performance and I think it featured one of the best plays of the year in college football and that was the great comeback by the Buckeyes in that game Illinois of course opening up big lead and then do you remember this moment here he came Keith Byers number 41 watch him lose a shoe won't slow him down he doesn't miss a beat and he zips into the end zone and the Buckeyes came back. That was the final score. This afternoon in Champaign. Upset. What a happy night in the Mike White household tonight as his son kicks a field goal to give the Illini that victory over the Buckeyes of Ohio State. So the Big Ten gets underway and we could have a couple of upsets. Flag picking up that short kickoff and he is swarmed on by the Spartans. I mean they came battering after him. We've got six minutes and 53 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And the Spartans of Michigan State lead Iowa 24 to 13. I'm Brett Musburger along with Eric Parsegan. And it has been two men who have done the job here this afternoon for Michigan State. Their quarterback. Number eight, Bobby McAllister. And their great running back, number 34, Lorenzo White. McAllister has thrown for 245 yards. And now the pressure is squarely on Chuck Long and the Hawkeyes. If they're number one, they'll prove it now. Plenty of time. He's got all day waiting. Now the defense comes free. This game started with the Hawkeyes exploding the big play. 60-yard touchdown pass from Long to Smith. They led by seven. Quickly it became 13 when he hit his tight end, but they missed the extra point, and that was the omen to be. The Spartans came bouncing back. They kicked the field goal. It was 13-3. Then it was a 50-yard touchdown pass from the freshman to Risen. 
And then Michigan State went ahead as Lorenzo White stepped into the end zone. And a second time pushed the lead to 11 points. And now Long on second and 10 pulls out over the middle to Harmon incomplete. Timothy Moore, a linebacker, got back with him beautifully. Beautiful job by Tim Moore. I can't believe that he got back there. Linebacker. He steps in and knocks the ball down just before it gets there. He'll come into the picture right. Looks, it looks like it's going to be a reception. He dives and knocks the ball down and knocks it away for an incompletion. Arrow, what do you see with this Iowa offense? They seem somewhat passive here. Well, what happened? They, their running game has been sort of blunted. They've got to go to the air to, to play catch up. There's plenty of time. 21 minutes to go, and long is dangerous. He's got half full open. First down. At the 39-yard line, Todd Crum, as you said, dangerous. <laughs> you bet. The young man, Happel, who his father, back in the 50s, was a running back here for the Hawkeyes, out of Cedar Rapids, showing you again why he gets so wide open, putting a move and getting to the outside on Crum for the first down. First and ten. Long to put it up again. They'll set the screen, and here's Harmon. Daylight comes to the outside at the 20, the 15, inside the 10, and finally Parker gets him out of bounds near the five-yard line, and the Hawkeyes now are storming back. A 37-yard gain. Perfect time for the screen. Michigan trying to rush the passer. Long looks away. Tries to look downfield, then dumps the ball off to Harmon here on the screen. He gets beautiful blocking downfield, turns to the sideline. A great call by Iowa. Ronnie Harmon, who is backed up by his younger brother, Kevin Harmon. And, of course, Ronnie Harmon is trying to come back and be as impressive as Lorenzo White has been here today from the eye. Harmon's the eye back. Comes out as a blocker. The pass to Smith. Touchdown, Iowa. Decision time for the Hawkeyes. Do they go for two? They have already missed one extra point. And their specialist has a tender leg. Hayden Fry must make a decision against George Perlis and Michigan State. Perlis is watching to see. There's no question that he's going to go for two in this sequence. They've already used one timeout. There, he finally got it. Finally got the timeout. He could not communicate, apparently, with his team on the field. He wanted to get the right defense in. He finally got the call because he's got to get the two points. Just a quick out by Smith here. Watch him in the flanker position. Beats a defender to the corner. Long has plenty of time, and he puts it away from the defenders and right in Smith's hands. Bangle, they can strike quick. Two plays, and they're in there. Now watch Harmon and Bush. They get ahead to protect Long as he rolls in that direction. And that is Smith's second touchdown reception of the day. And he simply outran both Miller and Crum to get open going to the corner of the end zone. Now, that is the second timeout that Perlis has used here in the second half. They are down to one, but they had to get the regular defensive unit back on the field because Hayden Fry was showing two points. And that could be very costly. There's still six minutes and 16 seconds left to go in the third period. And it looks like it's going to shape up as a tight ball game. And it has been a dandy so far. And those timeouts are so important. We used to try to conserve all of our timeouts because those clock-stopping opportunities can influence the outcome of a game. Now Michigan State is reduced to just one. Fake to Harmon. Under pressure. Throws it. He's got it in the end zone. Two points. Throw under pressure. Watch the pressure.
pressure that Long gets here. He still drops the ball in there. The receiver was covered. He hesitates. Then he puts it right there. Flag makes a great catch with a two-point play. Outstanding work. Johnny now, Miller, number two. Pull back to the three. Johnny Miller is trying to cover him, number 44, excuse me, Brent. But this is such a great play by Long. That's perfect. If it was a little shorter, a little longer, he never gets it. Watch his feet as Flag reached up, looked down to make sure that he was not out of the end zone. He's already scored a touchdown. Now he catches the two-point conversion. How about that excitement in Champaign? Let's go to New York for an update. He'll go by Chris White. It was 38 yards with four seconds remaining. It lifted them to a 31 to 28 win. The race is on. Let's go back to Brent Nara. And back here, Pat, 6.16 to go in the third. And it appears as though Hayden Fry will make a big change on his kickoff team. Marv Cook has teed the ball up. So that injury to Houtland has taken him off the field. And Cook kicks it to a short man at the 14. Altabelli trying to find an alley. He does. He is out to the 34. And speaking of Altabelli, he is one of our Toyota Leadership Award winners today. We present that weekly to a team member who's been singled out by his athletic department for his team contributions, grades, and citizenship. So it goes to Dean Altabelli for Michigan State and Iowa's outstanding linebacker, Larry Station. And now Station must do a job as Toyota has donated $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. First and 10 for the Spartans. Tight end in motion, the entire left side of the line jumped across that time. Crowd noise could have influenced them. There's a lot of noise in here now. Michigan State penalized today six times for 35 yards, twice in the first half, costly penalties when they appeared to be on the move. How do you figure that difference? Well, that really is a surprise. You just, you know, coming into this ball game, no one, you would think it'd be the other way at this point. Iowa with 425 yards. But the Michigan State offense has come to life. First and 15. McAllister rolling to the right. Throws on the run incomplete. He wanted Ingram. Era, because of McAllister's performance, I'm sure that the coaching staff has completely altered its game plan here this afternoon. Well, the McAllister is just reeking with confidence now. He knows that he can do it. The staff has confidence in him. They're not afraid to go ahead and throw the ball where they are here on the field. He has been able to do it. And look at the numbers right there. They tell a story. Second and 15, and looking ahead, if I might, for a moment next week, you'd have to think that McAllister will lead these Spartans against Michigan, regardless of Dave Urema's condition. McAllister to run back the other way. And he's cut down. Richard Pryor, number 99, chasing him. Now watch along the line with the Hawkeyes starting to play with some emotion. It is Pryor who comes busting in behind McAllister. They cut him off on his escape. And from behind, it was Pryor who tackled him right there. He was injured earlier in the week with a bad ankle, but he seems to be moving around quite well now. Third down and 18. Now because of the 
crowd sound. McAllister can't hear, so he wisely steps away from the line of scrimmage. Noisy. Good smart move by McAllister. He doesn't want to run a play without being able to have his team hear the signals. The official gives him a discretionary timeout. Whether or not they can quiet the fans or not, it'll be interesting to see as he comes back up the line of scrimmage. We've got five minutes and 12 seconds to go in the third period. formation to the right. Tight end coming in motion. McAllister rolling in that direction and Drost is on the pursuit. And he may have stepped out of bounds near the 20 yard line. The thing that really impressed me about the Hawkeye defense that time, Drost, number 76, who is six foot four, 207, uh, 285 pounds, Chased McAllister out of bounds. He looked like a back running over there. Era for the first time in this game, the Iowa defense has cut off the corners. Both those times when McAllister rolled left and rolled right, there was not that normal daylight that we've seen outside. Well, they got themselves in the jam with that five yard penalty to start with, where they had first and 15 rather than a positive gainer on the first play, but they did cut the corners off. Fair catch by Happel, good field position. He had to punt that into the wind. It was a 27-yard punt. Iowa can regain the lead. They're coming to bat. There's a family that will stay on its feet for a while. Mother and father of the Iowa quarterback and one of his brothers, Andy Long, watching here. They have made the drive down from Wheaton, Illinois. Grandmother, grandfather, another son there. And that's what Chuck is doing here this afternoon. And this is his best starting field position of the game. And on first down, throwing down to Smith. And Smith is out of bounds. Miller and Rowe were the deep backs. Well, they go for the big one right off the top. Long throws it down the sideline. I thought for a minute it was going to be inbounds. He catches the ball inbounds. Well, I don't know. That looks good to me. Did he drop it? That looks like he's got it. And upstairs, looks like his feet are in. There he catches the ball. Oh. Well, I don't know. I think that's good. You almost have to say that the defensive backs alertly took him out. But it was their momentum that got him out. He comes right back to Helverson, who's free. Down to the 25-yard line. Hey, 21-yard gain. It's a simple out pattern. Halverson just turns out. The coverage is so deep. Number 35 is from misses it. Halverson puts a good move on him. He's really not that fast. He's like Happel, just a great journeyman. Does a great job. 444 left in the third. Elverson on the sideline as the plays are carried in by the wide receivers. Smith breaks from the right. Long looked at him, he was covered. So he goes to a secondary receiver. He drops it off to Craig Clark. Timothy Moore, the linebacker, working over there on that spot. Long's primary target was Robert Smith. He was covered going deep on the right side. Harmon and Helverson check into the game. Meanwhile, McAllister and the Spartan offense waiting to come back to work. Having a magnificent afternoon here this afternoon. Leading now by three. Now on second and eight. Long with a deep drop. Still being pursued. Throws it to Ronnie Harmon. And he is out of bounds at the 20 yard line. Boy, that's a heck of a job by Long. That was a screen. They just let the defenders come. 
and they had it covered. Harmon finally broke away from it. Watch here. He's going to screen off to Harmon here to the right, to, to your left as you're looking at it. He pump fakes it. He sees that he's open. Look at the linemen coming in on him. They've all been let free because of the screen. He avoids them, throws the ball over to Harmon, who has broken away from his defender, and they finally run him out of bounds. That could have been a 15, 20 yard negative play. But Harmon and Long did a super job. Third and five. They run Harmon. Great play call. Shane Bullitt tripped him up, but not before Harmon got the Hawkeyes the first down. Watch Harmon. Michigan State expecting Long to put the ball back in the air, and Bullitt just getting a hand over in time, tripping him up, or he might have zipped into the end zone. 3.40 in the third. Iowa down by a field goal. Here's first down. Hudson is now the fullback. Number 20, David Hudson. Long rolling to the left. His receiver's covered on that side. He'll throw back for a touchdown to flag. And the Long family is overjoyed as their son has done it again. extra point and this one's good it's 28 24 you cannot give a passer like long this kind of time there is no rush on him no one putting any pressure he's looking for bobby smith in the end zone he waits turns and throws it back and finds flag wide open in the end zone tim moore tries to get back to cover it but he cannot, but he had too much time. That's the whole key to this play. Great throwback by Long, finding flag in the open. The receivers were covered, covered to the front side, but if there had been any pressure, he'd never had the time to throw it back. Michigan against Michigan State. And the kickoff carries Johnson deep into the end zone. To the 20 the 25 after the 27 now it's McAllister's turn <laughs> suddenly this reminds me of Kosar and Flutie <laughs> exactly that's the type of game we've got right here flag has scored two touchdowns Caught a two-point conversion. Here's Lorenzo White. A hole for him. He's got a first down. Out close to the 40-yard <laughs> line. You know, Brent, with all the action that's going on in this game, and two great running backs, Lorenzo White picking up another first down. There hasn't been one fumble in this game with all the things that have been going on. Ingram to the right. Rising to the left. Tight end in motion. They'll run away from it. And this time, the hole is not there. And the big All-American linebacker, Larry Station, took on White and prevailed that time. Second and nine. And UCLA putting away Arizona State 37 17 they're in the fourth we've still got 230 to go here in the third used to be that the Big Ten would play its games in about two hours and ten minutes and run <laughs> everything off tackle what a change where did all these quarterbacks come from 
Fake to White. McAllister goes for the home run. Ingram. And that time he overthrew Ingram. Devon Mitchell had gone back with Nate Greer. No chance for a reception on that one. Errol, what about the football that they use here this afternoon? Now, are these footballs that Iowa provides both Michigan State and their own team? You are allowed to play with the football that you practice with. In this particular case, both teams are using the same ball. But if you get into a ball game where one team is using a Wilson ball and another team is using the Rollins ball, then you're permitted to use your ball while you're on offense. Third and nine. McAllister gave it to White, a beautiful handoff. And White just battles his way close to another first down, but they're going to be short. Station again bringing him down. But the punt team will come on. It'll be Montgomery. How many yards has White gained this afternoon? He's carried 35 times, Brent, for 197 yards, and we still have a quarter to play. Montgomery booms one. And Michigan State's going to down this one inside that five-yard line. The importance of the punter. Next week, of course, Michigan and Michigan State up at East Lansing, and that one shapes up as a dandy. The Wolverines be unbeaten. Michigan State trying to come back and upset Iowa. And in two weeks, you'll see Jim Everett and Purdue against Ohio State. And that will be followed by Michigan versus Iowa or Auburn against Georgia Tech. The doubleheader, great action to college football here on CBS. 119 to go in the third. And there is Gary Costrobello punting it back. On first down from bad field position, a play we saw them practice this week. Hayden Fry goes ahead and punts it right back. Would you believe that, Coach? And he got a great favorable bounce, and he's got the Spartans back on their own 28-yard line in what appeared to be terrible field position for him. Great call by Hayden Fry. 70 yards, that was the total of that punt. Now, what they do in that formation is have the man check off and see if they're going to send anybody deep. They did not send a deep man, and Castrobala punts it back. Era, I can't remember if I've ever seen somebody punt it back on first down. I've seen some thirds and seconds, but I think that's the first time I've seen it on first. I'm sure it's occurred before. He just didn't want that ball back in his own territory with a four-point lead. Well, let's see if it pays off. Here's Lorenzo White. He didn't get much of a rest, did he? It's Larry Station in there on the play again. It's like one-on-one -on -one now with Station just hounding White. Yeah, well, he's getting to him now. Those last two or three plays has been able to corral White. And it's carried the last six times in the process. <laughs> what, what, what a day. White countering back to the other side first down again for Michigan State that play is really hurt Iowa that little draw play McAllister dro starts to spin out like he's going to sprint out to throw the ball White just kind of hides back in there and picks a daylight you see right here little sneak draw runs against the grade and station this time can't get to him almost does White's tough to get a hold of he's a heck of a runner that play has gained an awful lot of yardage for him. It really puts the pressure on that interior. We're talking about a doubleheader in two weeks. I think we've had one here today. <laughs> <laughs> but time running out here in the quarter. We'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local stations. Here's the first play of the final 15 minutes. Iowa with the lead, Michigan State with the ball, trailing by four. And you know who's coming at him, Lorenzo White. 
And he's got another first down. Bangs down close to the 40-yard line. Three yards and a cloud of dust, no more in the Big Ten. Coach, how many yards have we got here this afternoon? Brent, these are two great defensive teams like we called it at the top of the show. They've made 800 and how many yards? Lorenzo White has 226. And between the two teams, they've made over 200, 825 yards. So what can we expect here in the fourth quarter? A little defense? <laughs> no, but I'll the advantage now goes to Michigan State. They have the win. It's not quite blowing as hard as it did earlier, but it is favoring them. White is out. Craig Johnson, the backup tailback, has the ball right there and a hole, and apparently it doesn't make any difference which one of the tailbacks carries the ball. He gets down to the 26-yard line for Michigan State. I asked George Perlis how much drop-off there would be if Johnson had to come in if something happened to Lorenzo because he looked like the franchise coming in here. He was making all the yardage. He says not that much. He's just as strong and powerful. He probably is not quite as elusive. And a first down for the Spartans at the 26. And young McAllister has done such an effective job of leading this team. Tight end in motion. And a penalty marker goes down. Right side of the Michigan State line moved again. Well, we'll see if Hayden Fry's message to his team earlier this week holds. Play Good like your number two. Ball start. Offense. This could be temporary signal. Illegal procedure. He is staying very close to Barry Alvarez, his linebacking coach. One of the keys to his success in Iowa is the fact that he has kept this coaching staff intact through the years. He's done a marvelous job here. You know, they for 17 years, Iowa had not had a winning season. The last four years, he has brought eight or more victories to the bucket of the Hawkeyes each year. Got them into bowl games, including to the Rose Bowl once. This is first and 15. McAllister sprinting to the right, pressure from the back. He gets it off complete to the tight end. He hits Belt. It was like he almost felt that pressure. <laughs> Lorenzo White, we are told, is trying to jog on the sidelines because his right leg tightened up. They've had some great running backs, Michigan State, too, through the years, haven't they? Sherman White, Eric Allen, Clinton Jones. And here's the one now who steps up and says, I'm number one. Second down, McAllister comes out to the left. Penalty flag is down. Pass incomplete intended for Ryzen. But as he started his roll over to the left, the penalty marker was thrown. Going against the Spartans, and again it's that penalty. Well, they started out this drive with a penalty of five yards again. They had first and 15. Now they've got a holding penalty, which only had 10 yards to it. You can't self-destruct. Incidentally, Brent, both receivers were wide open again on that play. He hit the, one of the open receivers, but he dropped the ball, but it didn't make any difference. But I, maybe as we look forward on into this quarter, Iowa still hasn't covered all of the receivers that Michigan State is sending out. Craig Johnson still in a tailback in place of Lorenzo White. Two tight ends, and Roll comes in motion. They roll behind him. McAllister is cut off this time beautifully. John Breeze got back. It's John Breeze, number 57, and also the outside linebacker, the right side of the line, the end, which is the outside backer, and the tackle, fight off the blockers. Vries comes clear to the outside from the right tackle spot. He's got the kind of speed to haul McAllister down. And this has been a good series. 
by Iowa in putting the pressure on McAllister. Third down and 27. Michigan State has the wind at its back. He has thrown deep well here. If he can get some protection, he'll throw it toward Reason or Ingram. He's got good speed in those receivers. And Iowa respects it right now. Overthrows Morse, the fullback, who was working underneath. Devon Mitchell had picked up the fullback as he released. Fourth down, 12-26. If he could have completed this pass, it possibly could have been in field goal position. You can see the outside man drive off and the inside guy come inside, but McAllister overthrows it completely. They would have been in field goal position now at the 30-yard line. Now they'll play field position. Montgomery will hit this punt at about the 45. Remember, they downed one inside the five. They won't get this one. And Hayden Fry will not be punting the ball back on first down this time. And when you come back, the number one rated Iowa Hawkeyes will have possession and a four-point lead. Johnny Harmon's brother, Derek Harmon. So John Madden and Pat Summerall will be covering that game, and I'm sure they'll have Derek. Right now, we've got Ronnie Harmon. 12-19 to go. Long, and he uses still another fullback, David Hudson. Hudson right up the middle as Hayden Fry will see what he can do about knocking some time off that clock right now. And Lorenzo White is having his right ankle retaped right now. May have sprained it. And he could be just plain exhausted. to run and that's why got out to the 40 yard line a 12 yard gain by the Heisman Trophy candidate Chuck Long with Indiana staying unbeaten going on around the country and here the Iowa Hawkeyes have given the ball to Hudson and he gets out to the 44 yard line Moore number 42 meeting him there Hudson has uh, 6'2", 227 and the coaches say that he he's a good blocker but he has good leverage when he goes in there and runs the ball This will be a second and seven for the Hawkeyes. Again, one running back. Screen, screen it is. And a big game. but there's a penalty marker back at midfield. They took Hudson out of the game, reinserted Harmon as the lone running back. He released. They set the screen. It was a great run, but it's coming back. There's a penalty marker at midfield, and this run off the screen pass by Ronnie Harmon will not count. That might have put this game away. This is a big play as far as George Perlis is concerned. Big, big penalty. Let's see what it is. Let's see what he calls. Flipping. A 
Lopez. Repeat. I think we saw the end of it era as Harmon released and came out. I saw someone over on the right hand side and it looked as though he was going in behind the defender. And that's about where the penalty marker was thrown near midfield. Long comes back. Throws to the sideline to half complete. Inside the 50 yard line at the 49. That's a first down for the Hawkeyes. What a great control receiver he is. 13 yards, knew where to go for the first down. And there is another penalty marker down. How about the beautiful throw here to Happel as he breaks away from the defender, gets the first down. Penalties against, Mich against Michigan State. Now UCLA hammers Arizona State in the Rose Bowl this afternoon. Pac-10 race is going to be something just like the one in the Big Ten this year. Okay. Holding declined. We called holding, defensive holding against Michigan State. Iowa with the first down that they had elected to refuse it. Takes the first down there at the 49-yard line. Approaching the 10-minute mark here in Iowa City. They run Hudson. Timothy Moore, number 42, has been very active here this afternoon for Perlis. He made the stop. Second and nine. And again, Hayden and the Iowa staff keeping an eye on the clock now. As they try to maintain possession and run it down. Bringing in Clark, the tight end, number 49. Long doesn't have any hesitation, doesn't hesitate to throw the football from about anywhere on the field. And he's really impressive. He can throw the ball under any kind of pressure. Long throwing toward Happel, and it is intercepted by Michigan State on the 10 yard line. Todd Crum, who had position all the way on that pass. As soon as I say something about Long, he under throws the ball, actually. Happel was trying to go up the sideline. And he's mad at himself about that one. You'll see here from uh, the end zone, he sprints to the right like he's going to throw to the field, then turns and tries to hit Apple, who's trying to work one on one. But you'll see the ball is underthrown. He had no chance at it. Apple, which is an excellent receiver, has no chance at the ball. There's the position by Crumb, setting up all the time. When you come back, Lorenzo White will return for the Spartans. I guess if you're going to throw an interception, you want him down there with the ball. Exactly. It's just like a punt. Still, they had two two more downs to try to make a first down on the play. And another score on there, I think, that Hayden would feel more comfortable with. Station wrapping up White at the 10-yard line. So he is thrown for a loss of a couple of yards that time. And they are going to replace White. Lorenzo White is leaving the game with Craig Johnson coming in. McAllister will probably put it up here. Perlis talking to his brilliant running back. He said it's the draw. And Johnson gets out to the 18-yard line. Richard Pryor bringing him down. Era, I think that Iowa expected him to put it up that time. I certainly did, but the draw play again, the same play that we've seen him run that Iowa still hasn't stopped. Peterson goes to the field, he's blocked. The running back fakes to the left, which is Johnson, then comes back against the gray. Now they have third down to about three. Big play again. It's third and four. Johnson is the lone setback. Morris, the fullback, slotted over to the right. McAllister complaining about the noise, and now he'll call a timeout. McAllister calls a timeout, heads over to the sideline, 
to talk to the Michigan State coaching staff. That is the last time out by the Spartans. We'll be right back. The Era, you do not agree with referee Tommy Quinn's decision here. Well, McAllister turned and asked for a discretionary timeout because of the crowd noise, and then McAllister turned and called a timeout because he couldn't hear. I think that he should have given him a discretionary timeout under the circumstances. Third and four. Johnson, the hole is there. First down, and out to the 29-yard line. That same drop play again. The line veers to the field. They suck him over there. Watch it again. You'll see Peterson, the nose man, number 50. They block him clear across the hole. Watchman does. Look at the hole. The tackle is containing to the left side, and Station can't quite get to it. And there it goes for first down. Fullback Robert Morse did an excellent job of blocking on that play. He is set in front of Johnson right now. And that timeout that we just talked about could enter into this, the outcome of this game. There's Johnson. He gets a step. Davis has him wrapped up. Peterson had him for a two-yard loss, but lost, didn't get, didn't hold on to him. The Spartans use tight ends to message in the plays. This will be second and seven. Seven minutes and five seconds to go. Iowa leading by four points. Johnson trying to cut back. That backup is just not half bad. And the, uh, uh, Johnson is an outstanding back, I think. But they're faced with that same dilemma again. Third down about four. They run a lot of that time, a lot of time off that clock. Bringing it down to 6:30 here. See what they come up with again. Well, not they come with that draw. I don't know if they're going to go to the well once too often. McAllister also has rolled well on occasion. This time he does to the left under pressure. First down. He zips the ball to Ingram at the 48-yard line. Looks like McAllister is limping now. I don't know what happened on just as he threw the ball. Whether someone hit him. Looks like his right leg. Let's take a look here and see whether he's hit just as he throws the football, how he did this. Puts the ball right there. Oh, he's hit right from the back there. It looks like Burrell. Let's take a look at him in isolation as he backed up and Burrell was coming in hard and knocked him over a fallen player, and that's how he suffered the injury. Now he pitches to Johnson. Johnson trying to get outside and turn it upfield. He does. Down near the 30-yard line. 5.52 to go. Another 21-yard game. Here we see a shot of White. They're not going to throw the ball. They're going to run with it. Lorenzo. He wants to get back in there again. Look at Johnson. Hit the seam now. Good blocking in here. He gets a good hole. He finds it. You see Burrell knocked down, number 90. And Johnson finds a seam in there. He picks up 21 yards. First and 10 for the Spartans. Johnson. And this time, the Hawkeyes hold with George Davis coming up. Hayden unhappy with the performance of his defensive unit. Number of yards we've had here this afternoon, and Hayden can't be pleased about yielding 529 yards. Well, he knows with five minutes and 11 seconds on the clock and the way Michigan's move, Michigan State's moving the ball, anything could happen. Down to the five-minute mark. Here's the draw with Johnson. Johnson breaks a tackle. Gets to the 25-yard line. Devon Mitchell and Nate Career. Going to wind up with about third and four. This has been a drive of third down successes by the Spartans.
Perlis going with his backup tailback as Lorenzo White was shaken up. Another draw with Johnson. First down. Turns the corner and he's got a touchdown. Michigan State has scored with 4.06 to go on a 25-yard run by backup Craig Johnson. What a great job here, Era, by oh. Michigan State on that offensive line. You know, I, I thought McAllister still had the ball. He really deceptively handed that ball to Johnson. For a minute there, I thought McAllister was coming because they were blitzing from the backside. Perfectly executed play. Beautifully executed. They go 89 yards in only 10 plays, and they use up 514. They had perhaps their worst field position of the afternoon, and they stuff a touchdown when they need it. Now there's no timeout left out there according to the statistician. We'll penalize them. There's the flag. Now what's important about this, they need this to hold off losing to a field goal. Remember now, we're sitting on 30-28. Really a cheap penalty doesn't mean a whole lot. Dead ball, delay of the game, offense. Called delay of the game. I wonder if he gave him that timeout back down there. We didn't get, you know, when he uh, thought they had taken the third timeout. Well, let's see what Cardell can do here. The ball will be spotted down at the 15. Kick is up. Now it's 31 28. Watch a great blocking on the seal blocking from the left side. They really, you see the pursuer coming. He slips the ball in there, and then Johnson cuts clear across the grain and outraces the defensive secondary. Number nine, Sims cannot get to him. Johnson's got good speed. Touchdown. And the right side of that offensive line did its job again. Iowa ranked number one four minutes away from being upset here this afternoon Chuck Long has already tossed four touchdown passes it's 31 28 there was the scoring drive that put the Spartans back into the lead with the backup tailback scoring from 25 yards out the punter Montgomery has it teed up and kicks it off Fielded out about the five by Harmon. Looking for daylight, brought down near the 22-yard line. And it was that line blocking that did the job. Watch the left side to the left of McAllister. Breeze, number 57, the defensive right tackle, is just wiped out there by Mandrick. He's veering to the field. And here goes Johnson cutting back. Sims, number nine, will come into your picture here as he tries to catch him. Too late because the flow he was going the other way. Touchdown. Michigan State leads 31-28. There's the man that could make the difference, number 16, Chuck Long. With only a fullback behind him. They send four receivers out. They hit Helverson. First down, Hawkeyes. At 3.56, the clock stops. And, of course, next week, remember, Michigan unbeaten at 4-0 would await its state rival, Michigan State. And what a confrontation that would be in East Lansing if the Spartans can't upset the Hawkeyes here. 3.48. And again, the fullback is the lone setback behind Long. Chuck escapes, gets it off to his tight end, Mike Flagg, who is brought down near the line of scrimmage. 
Long just did not have the time to hunt up his receivers. Get a lot of pressure in there. David Wolf. I don't blame McAllister for wanting to say hello to his mom, his pop, and everybody else <laughs> down in Florida for the job he's done here this afternoon. He got good reason to smile. <laughs> he didn't just blossom, he's in full bloom. <laughs> <laughs> I was never so surprised in my life as I have been by this performance here this afternoon. Second and nine. Long, drilling it again to Halverson. Crum working him on the sideline, short of the first down. The coverage was excellent, but Long put it right to Halverson. Watch from the end zone here. Watch that ball just beyond the defender and right into Halverson's hands for about eight or nine yards. It's third and one. Third down. to the 45 for a first down for the Hawkeyes. You know, with 2.11 to go, we've got a three-point ball game here. It's 31 to 28. Now, ordinarily, you would say, well, kick a field goal and take a tie, and it won't hurt you that badly. But Hayden Fry told us yesterday, if this situation arose, he said, I was raised poor. I'd go for the win. So here he comes now. He's got to get 55 yards in 2 minutes and 11 seconds. Linebacker David Wolf being helped toward the Michigan State sideline, shaken up on that play. There is the field goal specialist for Iowa. Yesterday, uh, Hayden was telling us that he had kicked so many wet balls. They had played in the rain in the first three games that his leg actually got sore from kicking a wet heavy ball and he had to rest him during the course of the week. Quick throw to Halverson. Stopped the clock again picked up nine yards. That's one thing about this Iowa team they can pick off yardage very quickly with 155 to go I'm Brent Musburger along with Eric Parsegan the number one ranked Iowa Hawkeyes are losing by three with a minute 55 to go in this game but they are on the move being led by Chuck Long over the middle for Harmon incomplete he overthrew him that time inside the 30 yard line well, he had him open too he could have just dropped it in there Remember, Harmon was a wide receiver before he was switched to tailback by Iowa last year. They bring him out of the wingback position, keeping only the fullback home, send him over the middle, and the pass was high. Long is now 28 for 37 for 348 yards and four touchdowns, but he has two interceptions. Here's third and two. Here's Harmon trying to get outside. Cuts back. First down. The clock will stop at 1.44. Good running by Harmon. He was cut off at the pass. He had to turn it back to the inside. He did it. Got to the inside. Here's Hayden. He wants a timeout. That'll be the first one in the second half. So he still has two. Plenty of time. Chuck Long comes over to the side. He'll confer with his head coach. And we'll be right back. We are back. Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. One minute and 44 seconds remaining. The Hawkeyes trailing by three. And they must negotiate 43 yards to get the touchdown that would put them back in front. That number one ranking and everything else on the line right now for Hayden Fry and his coaching staff. And Harry, you really cannot say enough about the job that George Burles and his staff has accomplished here with a backup quarterback in a few short weeks. We've had a beautiful game plan against the Hawkeye defense. You know, you're talking about one of the best defenses in the nation. 
and year in and year out, it's been that way. But here we go with 144 left. Long to throw it on first down. Pumps comes to Happel. He's got it and out of bounds. Inside the 25. Boy, that Happel is really something. Number 40 here on the right side of your screen. He comes down, puts a move on to the inside, breaks away from him. Long puts it here, right there, right in his hands. 35, Todd Crum was protecting the inside of the post, but they took the out. They're down to the 23-yard line, Brent. You and I sure get bad games, Coach. Oh, wow. We've had some dandies. Last week, it was Texas Stanford. Before that, Georgia Clemson. And it was Michigan upsetting Notre Dame and triggering its fine season. Here it's Iowa, number one rank, trying to come back. Now, Long will utilize a timeout. And there's a penalty flag being thrown by one of the officials. There's a penalty flag at the 10 yard line. Timeout was called by the quarterback. So we'll straighten out the penalty and the timeout situation and we'll be right back in a moment. Era, the official who threw the flag, did not realize that Chuck Long had already called timeout. The 25 second clock was just ready to zero out when he called the time. So there's no penalty. We've got a first and ten. The ball is at the Michigan State 23 yard line, and here come the Hawkeyes. Good protection. Helverson's wide open. Another first down. Close to the 10 yard line. He's out of bounds at the 11. Those two wideouts, Happel and Helverson, have been tremendous. You see Halverson comes up the field and breaks away. He's wide open there. Number 18, Ron Rowe cannot get to him. And Long is putting it in there. All right, now it's at the 11. With one and a half minutes to go. Plenty of time. The mark of a great team is one that can come back with time running out. We're about to find out if Iowa deserves its number one ranking. Chuck Long has got the Hawkeyes. First and 10 at the 11. He'll run Harmon up the middle, jukes outside, hits the four-yard line. The clock winding down toward the one minute and 10 second mark. Michigan State had a blitz on that time from the wide side of the field. That was a good call by the Hawkeyes. They probably will wind up with single coverage, and I don't think anybody can stop Long and his receivers on one-on-one -on -one down here. Hayden Fry pulls the wide receivers out. Double tight end formation. It's the power eye for Iowa. Hudson is number 20 in motion. They come to Harmon behind the motion. Harmon dives in his stop, pushed out of bounds by the Spartan defense. Todd Crum, 35, along with 18. Ronald Rowe right there on the tackle. Clock running again. It's not stopped. They try to get outside to the right side with Harmon. Looks like he has a little leverage there, but Harmon is tripped up there by number 35, who is Todd Crum. He does a great job. We've got timeout. We're going to go away briefly, and we'll be right back. 31 seconds left here in Iowa City. It's 31-28. Michigan State trying to hold on, but the Hawkeyes are inside the five. And remember, they can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. If they get to the one yard line against George Perlis and this Spartan defense, they would get a first down. 31 seconds for Hayden Fry and the Hawkeye offense. Chuck Long delivering the play in the huddle. He should have two plays called in the huddle if he attempts to run the ball because it's just 31 seconds. A first down to stop the clock to move the chain. This but wouldn't take very long, though. They've got to have two plays here if he doesn't get it on this one. And you wonder why coaches get afflicted with ulcers. <laughs> this has been some kind of a football game. I think it's an indication of what kind of a season they're going to have in the Big Ten. They won 80% of their non-conference games. Now they start the conference. Illinois upsets Ohio State. 
McAllister and Michigan State are on the brink of upsetting Iowa, but the Hawkeyes have got one last at bat. Also, let's see what kind of deployment Michigan State has defensively. This is so similar to a year ago when Iowa failed on a two-point conversion. Here they are needing the touchdown. Long has got it. He'll walk in. He faked to Harmon and kept it. what you're supposed to do. Well, it's been a tremendous comeback. They walked into a buzzsaw against Michigan State, passing and running, and they over... It, well, they still got, what, 27 seconds left? Anything could happen. That was a great camera shot of young McAllister. What did he do? He grabbed his helmet, and he said, let's go back. Here's the lateral now on the kickoff. And Michigan State has got the ball out to the 38-yard line with 20 seconds and a couple of deep receivers who can fly. McAllister. No timeouts. Rising to his left. Ingram to his right. Three man rush. Straight back. Comes out to Ingram. First down. 14 seconds, and he's down to the 45 yard line. No they'll move out. the chains, no timeouts, so they'll come up now with the quick huddle. A 16-yard gain. McAllister sending information to another freshman. Ryzen. Now he tells everybody what he's got. Morris is the fullback in the slot. McAllister rolls to the right. He should get out of bounds. He almost turned it back inside and gained a few more yards, but he realized... I can't stop the clock. He's got three seconds. He must throw the ball down into the end zone and get something going. Well, just the point that you have made, if there is interference, it still doesn't come out to that one-yard line. It's only a 15-yard penalty with an automatic first down. Well, it's been a valiant effort on the part of Michigan State if they don't get this one in with three seconds left. Willie Boyer as they send trips. It's Big Ben left for Michigan State. McAllister will heave it in their direction. It goes down toward the end zone. Ball is batted in the air, but can't be caught. <laughs> Iowa prevails, but they know they've been in a football game.
It's great to see the players out there shaking hands with each other because both teams played so superbly. I thought that was terrific, the teams greeting one another. Here's the last play with three seconds. McAllister puts it up, the ball is deflected. We saw it a year ago in the Boston College Miami game. Same sort of thing. The ball bounces up in the air here. And there is an effort made to catch the football. I can't tell by which receiver. There it is, knocked up into the air. Number 11, Ingram, dies for the ball, and it could have been, but it wasn't. Lorenzo White, who set the Michigan State record here this afternoon, and he is one of our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Lorenzo White, the tailback out of Michigan State, and from Iowa, the quarterback, Chuck Long. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund. As Chuck Long, who had thrown for four touchdowns, fakes to Ronnie Harmon, keeps it on the bootleg, and in victory raises high the football. We'll return after these messages from your local stations. 